TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D. Wood. With me now is the ally of evil everywhere, the atheist donkey brain uh, prostate prophet. How you doing? Don't do, don't do atheism. Don't do atheism. Will the persecution never end? Don't do atheism, guys. It's dangerous. It's not good. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing well. How are you doing, David? Good, What's good, up? good, good, good. I saw this channel. I saw this channel, Daily Dose of Wisdom, and he was discussing this clip. Well, this is not what we'll be watching right now, but he was discussing a clip by uh, Michael Shermer and Stephen Meyer, where they were talking about mathematics and like the reality of numbers and stuff. Anyway, then I went and found the original discussion. The original discussion they were having is uh, something like uh, whether science leads to God or something like that. Anyway, uh, you you know you know Michael Shermer, right? Yeah, um, I mean, you know who you know who this guy is, right? My, I, oh, I thought we were talking about Michael Myers. No, Michael um, My you know Michael Myers, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I do know Michael Myers. Uh, very scary. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, Michael Shermer. He's that. He's that guy. He's that that science guy who is uh, less less uh, in the pop culture than the other uh, atheist mm -hmm. figures, but um, but also better actually. <laughs> And more, you know, deeper. <clears throat> yeah, more, I had, um, yeah, there's like a, uh, there, lots of people use like a kind of, uh, I don't know, village skepticism where they're just taught, uh, hey, anything you don't believe in, just say, ah, where's your proof for that and stuff like that. Uh, but he's actually like deep into, um, Bayesian reasoning and, uh, like, hypothesis confirmation and things like that and the tools that you should use to avoid coming to wrong conclusions and i certainly wouldn't agree with his application of these tools in a lot of the situations but um there is a question of like hey if you if you want to avoid gullibly falling for complete nonsense what what are the tools that you would use in uh, analyzing uh, evidence and so on. Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, and by the way, I debated, I debated Stephen Meyer, uh, several years ago on the existence of God. It was funny cause, uh, <laughs> he tweeted, he tweeted right, right when the debate was starting, he tweeted out, he said, Hey, so I'm debating this guy who's apparently a total psychopath or something like that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was funny. That's fun. Um, <clears throat> so that's him. And then Stephen Meyer, it's cool. I liked this clip when I went and when I went and uh, looked at it, because these guys are really, really smart. So there's uh, Michael Shermer, very smart. And then Stephen Meyer also, but it's like, I don't know, they're, they're similar in certain ways, but they're also really smart in different ways. And Stephen Meyer's really just look at all this evidence and look, we're, co we're, we're comparing all these different possibilities. And if it's this possibility, then that, then that's a problem. And if this possibility then that's a problem for you and if this is a possibility then that's a problem for you this one haha -ha, so all these support me he's like that and michael Shermer's is like yeah i don't know uh, maybe there's something else maybe i'm missing something here and so anyway it's, it's uh anyway pretty cool pretty cool i like both these guys i like both these guys and i like the guy who's leading the discussion whom i was not familiar with brian guys ever heard of brian callen I don't ring a bell. Apparently, he's a comedian who did a podcast. Apparently, so he's a comedian who started doing podcasts, which that seems to be. I think Joe Rogan laid down that pattern because then Bill Burr's doing like they all started doing it. And it's good because if you're naturally super funny, seems like you'd be good for. Uh, for having discussions with people that are entertaining. But that don't ring no bell. By the way, since you brought up Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> i really gonna go into that <laughs> no yes. i just wanted to point out because i found this out a long long time ago grew up in yes west virginia hillbilly hillbilly area poor almost area heaven. poor area yeah. it's almost heaven but it's a uh, it's pretty poor pretty poor there okay well, trailer park trailer park go to movies go to movies and uh watch the movies fun to watch the movies 
I was, I forget how old I was, but I went to see one of the Halloween movies with my brothers. But we were in a di- we were in a completely different state, and we we were we were in the we were in the hood. We were in the hood. We went to a theater in the hood to catch the uh, new Halloween movie, and it was the whole place was jam packed. Every seat except for like a couple in the front row, full us, and all black people, and it was like a thousand times funner watching a Halloween movie, um, <laughs> in a in a uh, in a black theater. As far as, oh. <laughs> it's a totally different kind of audience from white people. White people, oh, no, it's kind of, don't go over there, right? These guys are like, <laughs> these guys are like telling, these guys are like telling every character what to do the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. But it was, it was like, it was way more fun. It was way more fun. So I don't know why everyone doesn't, uh, doesn't do the movie experience like that. That's, I, I thought you were going to say something racist when you said uh, black people. Yeah, it is. Against white people, they don't know how to watch movies. They make it boring. I mean, true. put it this way, put it this way. If you're watching a movie in a completely white audience, the only entertainment experience is the movie, which you could watch somewhere else. You could watch that in your home screen or something like that. If you are in a theater, and I, I, don't, even, I don't even know if people are like this everywhere, if it's just like, uh, if it's, it's just certain areas or something like that. But it was, it's, a way, it's, a, it's a way more uh, interesting, fun experience. Anyway. <clears throat> So, now that we've gotten AP's racism against uh, <laughs> against all non-Turkish people out of the way, all right, let's go ahead and jump Thank into you. some of this clip. Oh, I made Turks Turks angry again on Twitter. That's so, that's so. Why did you do that? Uh, I don't know. When was that? When was that? When was it? Yesterday? Oh yeah, yesterday. I I tweeted something about uh, if you want to look at a country that treats its uh, minorities terribly, like second class citizens, look at Turkey, and then. <laughs> uh, talked about the Kurdish people and all that and then see if the response is like we're talking about how dare you traitor how about you come here and we show you (laughs) are Turks how are Turks at dealing with criticism because I've noticed uh, I've noticed some different uh, different cultures I've noticed some different cultures and some are not good at dealing with criticism the average response that you will get from Turks when you uh, criticize them uh, or you know point out terrible things about Turkey is, uh, how about come to Turkey and I will show you what mistreatment looks like. Uh, well, uh, that's a decisive refutation of your point. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. What do you think is, because uh, I view a lot of what's going on in the... Uh in the Muslim world as sort of a desperation moves that are going to be followed by, okay, this isn't working. Uh, So it looks like Turkey is going in a dangerous direction. Do you think it's going to, you think it's going to last and they're going to keep getting worse or is it going to, is that going to collapse? Well, there is the thing like uh, people, people generally, um, you know, you, you would, you would like to eat chicken, uh, but you go for Turkey and and turkey it doesn't taste as good as chicken turkey is like the second choice the less popular choice uh that you slaughter just to eat it chicken is generally the better one tastes better is sweeter and all of that and i prefer to turkey just turkey sucks in my opinion um but it has nothing to do with the country turkey uh which is terrible and which has no hope at all for the future Mm. Interesting. LJ says, how come you recovered from your son's death so quickly? Because I'm a psychopath, LJ. I recover from stuff pretty much I, instantly. I, I spent a week with David and he was like crying every day. Yeah, it was pretty sad. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, didn't I go live that night? You did. You, me and you Anthony did. went live that night. Interesting. Yes, yes. And you told me after this dream uh, that your son died. And I'm like, what? And then I and then then I realized, yeah, okay, okay, you are the psychopath. And then you got these uh, keyboard jihadis. You got these keyboard jihadis thinking, aha, we know how to finally get to him. All the years of threats and uh, insults and threatening the family members and so on. Well, I'll just start talking about his son. That'll work. Yeah, wait for what is it. This people- AP, what? No, I was about to say, what were we talking about right before, right before we went live? No, well, we'll keep that. As, we'll keep everything a surprise, ladies and gentlemen. 
Everything yes, will be yes. a surprise. Yeah. But people everyone... in the chat are now arguing, are now saying that turkey is better than chicken. Like, what is wrong with people? <clears throat> this is your audience. This is your audience. Just look at them. Yeah, I don't know. That's tough, man, because I fry my turkeys, so they're banging. Turkey. I deep fry my tur I deep fry a turkey every year. Well, I usually deep fry too because we have a bunch of family members. So I deep fry two giant fat turkeys. I don't know. I'm losing faith in these people. Yeah, pretty bad. All right. Well, uh, hang on. We got a couple. Let's read a couple of super chats real quick, and then we'll jump into this video. Super dope video that's going to crush and humiliate AP for being on the atheist side. Oh, it's, I mean, it's actually a really good discussion. Although Stephen Meyer win clearly wins. Um. Who do you think would be targeted due to Bukhari 3611? What is that reference? Bukhari 3611. Great. Now I have to look stuff up for 17 hours. I relate the traditions of Allah's messenger to you, for I would rather fall from the sky than attribute something to him falsely. But when I tell you a thing which is between you and me, then no doubt, am I looking up the right thing? Uh, yeah. Then no doubt war is, is guile. Guile. How do you say that word? Guile. G what? Guile. Is it G-U-I-L-G-U-I-L-E? Yes. Guile. I heard you Allah's messenger saying in the last days of this world, there will appear some young foolish people who will use uh, in their claim the best speech of all people, the Quran, and they will abandon Islam as an arrow going through the game. Oh, yeah. They believe will not go beyond their throats. So wherever you meet them, kill them. For he who kills them shall get a reward on the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is, this is people leaving Islam and saying to kill them. There is an interpretation of this uh, in depending on which Muslim uh, uh, community and uh, school you're part of. But um, often they will say that uh, many scholars will interpret this as referring to uh, what they call the Khawarij or the Khariji, mm. which are um, people who go. Oh, um, interesting. So that's how they, they applied that to them. Yeah. Who, and who so leave, in, that, uh, in that case, it could have been in that case, it could have been a fabricated Hadith later on to attack yeah, those guys. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because there were those people who were like who were going uh, away from the Sunni and Shia uh, circles and going their own way and becoming allegedly you can go extreme. Your own way. They were like, well, those people they have left Islam. They're not real Muslims. So they, they, they practice and they preach and they pronounce and all of that. But they are dangerous. They are. They're not they're on the hawk. They're, they're not on the hawk. They're not on the hawk. Yeah, yeah. They got no hikmah. Yeah, and, and in today's time people will uh, apply that to um, to some extreme jihadist groups and the extreme jihadist groups will apply it to the regular ones <laughs> and the the Sufis will apply it to the Salafis and the Salafis will apply it to the others and so on it's just a giant mess like mm -hmm. one of those things that somebody probably fabricated at some point and now it's like oh this is of course not about us it's about those other people mm -hmm. among our faith yeah, yeah. that's how it all looks else. Yeah, weird stuff uh, AP could you take care of this guys you forgot to give a content warning I totally forgot because we're not used to it but this person is trying oh, to need oh, a content no, warning. Oh, no, oh, no. Yes. Uh, during this stream, we will um, possibly address sensitive topics. And occasionally, we might say things like, darn, or gosh. So uh, viewer discretion or, is or, or golly, or jeepers. <laughs> <laughs> but AP, <laughs> AP, what if an atheist, what if an atheist happens to stumble into the live stream while Stephen Meyer is saying something, what then? It's the, that person may be traumatized. So always be advised, be warned. There's going to be very sensitive content here. Uh, warning, viewer discretion is advised and always observe all reasonable warnings and take care of your children. Yeah, so uh, I think that meets all the uh, general requirements of apostate Aladdin, who is the supreme commander of all content that we're allowed to post on YouTube. Oh, Thank you. Uh, Chaos says, uh, hey, AP, I respect you a lot. But I'm curious Thank what it would take to convince you that Christianity is true. It would take for Chaos to become order, uh, for Chaos to disappear permanently and for only order to prevail. 
You know who else wanted order? <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were gonna say <laughs> that's what popped into my head yeah <laughs> i knew it <laughs> uh apu pucker all puff daddy says grand mufti smurf oops wrong reference quran only bear ap when you were a sufi mystic did you believe in the sun setting in a puddle and or the moon splitting so did you believe these uh issues with islam uh, I didn't really think about that. I, um, as a Sufi, you spend your time more on, uh, more on doing moronic. You things. said moron. <laughs> yeah, and uh, viewer discretion is advised, uh, dear viewers. You don't want to be offended. Please, please be very careful watching this live stream. Um, <laughs> well, no, yeah, two, I did. Uh, two warnings are better than one. I always say. Yeah. Better yes, safe. Yeah. Than, better safe than sorry. And safety is my middle name. Yes. Yes um i b being a sufi is, is kind of um is complicated it is more about uh it focuses much more about your personal um you know effort to believe and to practice and to humble yourself and it goes to really extreme things and i was I, I felt very romantic about it when i was a sufi as well and like uh re remember reading um texts from uh old sufi well-known sufi scholars that talk about things like annihilating the self and things like that like that that's the kind of stuff that that sufism focuses on it has this very very eastern uh influence thinking um so it focuses more on that stuff I, I i i don't ever remember um thinking about specific hadiths like that the issue is when i read the quran and i encountered some of the ridiculous descriptions of the natural world i was um that that was really difficult so and that's also one of the main reasons why i actually started leaving or questioning and eventually left islam uh, Follow-up question. Not sure why everyone's interested in this right now, but Caspian says, uh, "AP is Sufism at least some, at least in some way, more benign than mainstream Islam?" Oh uh, yes, it is. Yeah, I would this say so too. Really so stupid. Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, it is. It is in a way. So, it, as said, as I as I just said, it is. Uh, it, it focuses more on a different aspect of of Islam, uh, more on not moron stop distracting with that david always thinking about the band stuff uh it focuses more on <laughs> on the personal spiritual development than than on the other uh stuff than about than on political stuff it still does have those aspects though it still does it, it is still islam in the end it still has the same scripture it still has the same history still has the same um end goal and all of that and i did learn as a sufi for example um that it may be soon that the that the the, the events of the end will come and we will fight the jews always the jews so you know in a Sufi environment, I did grow up thinking, oh, we will fight the Jews. That's never absent. So um, you could you could say, though, that it is in a way better than the average because the average is already terrible and Sufism may be a little bit uh, more benign. Yeah. All right. Let's go through. So you heard it here, folks. Sufism is true. Don't be a goofy Sufi. Yeah. Don't be a goofy Sufi. All right, let's jump into some of this discussion. Again, this is um, a comedian who's doing a podcast who has on uh, Stephen Meyer and Michael Shermer. He They had some introductions and some little uh, chit chat at the beginning. I chopped that off. We'll jump right into once he once they're actually getting into a point. Here. I thought we were going to talk about serious stuff and like comedian. This is the perfect ser serious stuff. <laughs> Okay. 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 All right. So I'm going to start with I'm going to I'm going to pose these questions to you, Michael, and then you can piggyback. You ever seen this guy? You're the skeptic here. You know, the, the, we do know it seems that we're here. Most people are here who are engaged in the best that's been thought and said. We we educate ourselves. We study science. We study philosophy. We study history, and I think we do it all because we want to get closer to the truth. 
because there is this idea in we have we seem to have this inherent need to know what is actually real what is actually true what is the bedrock i can moor into regardless of where the winds blow and one of the liabilities of being an intellectual and and reading all the science and all the history and all the philosophy is that you find yourself moving in a circle you know you you asked that question when the last time you guys spoke is there a, will we ever come to a consensus my 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 suggestion is no not not as long as we keep talking the way we do and not what what are you laughing at with this dude what kind of a, what kind of a crappy studio is that? It's like I just uh just put some chairs together and some table and then wrote the name of the podcast on there that's how people do board. it now you just get a cool up, table you get a cool <laughs> table all we need is a big room we should have a, we should have a studio <laughs> like this and bring people in and sit them down and have discussions like this we should we should <clears throat> but yeah anyone yeah some people trick out their studios some people are just like okay i need a table I need three mics yeah. Three mics and a laptop, and then we're crappy is better. It actually looks good. Stop criticizing everything. And then, uh, and then some, uh, some sign in the background. Yeah, I, I think the. I, I even have a problem with it. They do not. They do not. Uh, you can see the different white balance with each camera angle. Just leaving that there. Fix that, dude. Fix that, dude. In your next podcast. Tribution of faith is the idea that. There must be something that all of us sort of understand as Whoa, truth. Right. So, so my first question to you is, yeah. See, people wouldn't even have noticed it, except I had to say something. Oops, Sorry. I wasn't really paying attention. But this, yeah, this one is like really, really, really bad in comparison to the other one. It's Do you believe in an, in an objective truth, in a higher truth, in, in the idea that we are? What is that thing that we're all looking for? Yeah. Where, where well, is that thing? truth with a small t? Mm. That is uh, something confirmed to such a degree, it would be reasonable to offer your provisional assent. That is to say, most people think this is pre. There's a lot of evidence. The evidence converges to this one conclusion, doesn't converge to some other conclusion. So it's reasonable for today to assume this is true, by and keep an open mind just in case it could be refuted tomorrow. The Big Bang theory, the theory of evolution, climate change is human caused. Vaccines work or masks don't work. Whatever it is. Mm. Um, but those are all measurable truths that that, that yeah. rely da are, are, on data are you after and fact. something else. I am. Well, like what? Well, uh, a meta truth, because because um, I, I'm after the idea that there might be within those truths there might be an all encompassing truth. So let's take. Uh, well, you mean so that we could even approach the question that is rationality well, that it, that is. What's what's the justification for rationality? Is that what you're asking? That we can actually understand I, truth I, I'm, at all? I'm I'm suggesting that if you extrapolate in one direction or the other, it seems that, for example, we. You get where this is going? No. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble here. So it seems like he's. So That's Michael Sherman's talking talk. about there 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 are there are truths and so on, and this guy's like, is there some like ultimate truth that like all this, I guess like all this is a part of or something like this. And it's all, and like, are we like trying to get to some ultimate truth about things? S sounds like something like that. The thing is, um, <clears throat> the first response that Michael Shermer gave to the host's question, I don't even remember what it was about because the response was like, I heard the re response. I'm like, Okay, dude. Like, <laughs> okay, now can you just give a normal response? <laughs> I don't know. It sounded like a like a research paper put together into a into a brief sentence or something. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh... We admire certain things and seem to our our head raises and we look in. I actually like this point. Yeah, I forgot. Um... He makes an important point here, and this is where I realize, oh, okay, this guy's actually pretty, uh, pretty sharp here. Let me back up just a little bit to get what he's talking about, because uh, this is cool. Direction or the other, it seems picture. that, for example, we we admire certain things and seem to our our head raises and we look in the direction there as opposed to there because yeah. we know there lies the good things we may never reach we can't measure what is your problem laughing at this guy no, michelle says huh 
Michelle says this sounds like we talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, no, again, he's making an, he's making an important point here. This is cool. I'm thinking of perfection. Let's just take the idea of Jesus Christ as the symbol. Forget the Messiah or whatever the man. The idea of, of this 33 year old man who uh, sacrificed his own body for a higher principle. And later in the discussion, he doesn't sound like he's a Christian. He sounds he, he says he sounds like he, he uh, takes this stuff like metaphorically and stuff like that. But uh, the point he's making here interesting in terms of you can have you can have you can have something that you're like drawn towards and if you're if you're thinking of like empirically verifiable scientific things it doesn't make sense that you would be drawn to that as opposed to something uh something else but um let me make let me let him I or the man the idea of, of this 33 year old man who uh, sacrificed his own body for a higher principle, tortured on the cross, and said, I love you anyway, and I forgive you. That, that idea, I mean, he lost everything, uh, unjustly accused, all that stuff. Um, and then you have G Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar, the most powerful man in the world. You, you would think that from a measurable scientific analysis, you're better off being Julius Caesar than you are Jesus Christ. There's a lot of pain over here and a lot of pleasure in this direction. Wait a minute, Yet wasn't we, he assassinated? Well, he may have. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to change his example, right? Because he's saying, hey, hey, if you had to pick between, if you're just thinking scientifically and materialistically and so on, you had to choose between uh, being like Jesus, who's going to get tortured and killed, um, and is innocent, or you know, be most powerful man in the world like Julius Caesar. Then uh, who are you going to go with? Seems like you should want to be Julius Caesar. And yet, there's something about people like Jesus that that draws us in that direction. And of course, Michael Sherman, hey, Caesar was heck, Caesar was assassinated too. <laughs> so he's going to have to change his example here. And, but let's just take <laughs> let's just take anybody like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or go. anybody who's lived this or a movie star for God's sake. It could be uh, Brad Pitt or or Ryan Reynolds. That we seem to admire this other thing. We seem to admire the, the footsteps that Jesus walked, or even if we're not Christians, over the footsteps this other person walked. And it, you know what that just reminded me of? It was actually fun. This was a long time ago. So this is when uh, Tim Tebow, so Tim Tebow, uh, really really awesome nice christian who grew up doing like missionary work with his family and stuff homeschooled became uh the the most phenomenal college football player in the country then became a professional went to the nfl and uh wasn't nearly wasn't nearly as good i know I, guys i know you got some you bunch of tim tebow fans and stuff out there his completion percentage was like 45 percent or something like that. that that's not good for a for an nfl quarterback but he just kept winning. He just kept winning and stuff when they when they finally put him in. And they ended up going to the playoffs. They ended up beating the Pittsburgh Steelers in the first round of the playoffs. No one expected it because they got Tim Tebow, who was not he was great. He was great when he needed to run. He was great when it went. They call it like going schoolyard football, where you just kind of scramble around and wait for someone to come up and stuff like that, or you can take off running and stuff like that. But as far as like precision plays, he just wasn't wasn't good at it. Um anyway. They beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in the first round, and then they had to go play uh, the New England Patriots with Tom Brady, who's the GOAT, who's the, the greatest quarterback of all time. Anyway, I remember reading a comparison of Tom Brady and Tim Tebow, and it was a lot of them were funny. It's like uh, Tom Brady runs like he's wearing space boots. Uh, Tim Tebow runs like he's wearing Acme rocket boots, right? Because Tebow's great at running and Tom Brady sucked. But one of the comparisons that this just reminded me of, they said, um, <clears throat> Tom Brady is the man that every teenage boy wants to be. Tim Tebow is the guy that every teenage boy's mom wants him to be. <laughs> you catch that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, you're if, you're, yeah. if you're talking teenage boy, what do you want to be? I want to be like Tom Brady, you know, he's got Giselle and all this stuff and he's the greatest, uh, greatest quarterback in, in the world. And Tim Tebow, that's what every teenage boy's mom would want him to be. I want you to be a good boy like Tim Tebow. But anyway, it kind of reminds me of this of like, hey, if you were, if you're just looking at empirical 
empirical evidence or something like that, if you're just looking at this from a materialistic perspective, who you want to be like, Jesus or e Elon Musk? I mean, how do you not go with, uh, with Elon Musk? So the fact that lots of people are drawn towards something else, it's like there's this other component of reality that is, that is not included in this just straightforward materialistic uh, system. I think that's what he's getting at. That's why I thought it was interesting too. The, the problem with the problem with the example that you gave david is that nobody in the world cares about american football so uh when you bring up an example from american football you lose like the attention of everyone in the room except for some americans because everyone is like what? T tom t-bone uh, apostate apostate aladdin was right about you <laughs> you cannot be trusted the dark side of live streaming with apostate profit here <laughs> <laughs> completely the, unprovoked attack on the greatest sport in the history of humanity. <laughs> the funny thing about this Brian Callen guy is... Um, Look at that sign, though. That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He just... I don't know how long this took for him to get to this point, but uh, he basically, like, th this could have been, like, one sentence or two sentences, and he... <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't know that like, yeah, half of he lost me completely and <laughs> lost half the room with setting up this whole question or this whole topic that he's talking about. You're and saying he could have he could have made that point much more succinctly and said, hey, if we're just thinking like materialistically, empirically and so on, which I assume, Michael Shermer, is how you're thinking. It would make sense if you're you know drawn to something to be, you know, want to be drawn to successful figures like Elon Musk. And yet there's this other thing where we're drawn to being like even self-sacrificially, you know, dying as an innocent person, something that draws us there. So how do you, how does that work into you? Like, is that just some weird fluke in, in our human development yeah, or something but it, like that? It, it, instead of doing that, this guy goes into like, uh, and considering the metaphysical aspect of naturally desiring to uh, observe the truth of this and this and that, and so also considering that this isn't this and this and that and that, and uh, there is of course the meta aspect and the meta this and that and meta this and that and meta that and this and this and that and that and this. Anyway, Jesus or Caesar? Like, <laughs> <laughs> why do you why do you have to hate on anything that anyone else does? <laughs> I've never seen and I've never seen anyone that you don't know and you start watching and you're not like, ah, let me tell you everything he's doing this wrong. This is why it sucks. Yeah, that's that's what I am, man. I, I have first, to criticize. Him. First Candace Owens, now this guy. <laughs> and and that seems to suggest that maybe that person dovetails along the sort of the, the grain of the universe. There's a better way to go. What what about that? Okay, so you might be after something, say, different kinds of truths. So I make the distinction should say empirical truths, like the examples I just gave. Perhaps the Big Bang Theory is wrong, and there's some other better theory this could happen and so forth. Uh, but what you're talking about is maybe something slightly different, like a political truth or a religious truth or a moral truth. You know, what did Dr. King stand I'm, for? I'm talking about an overall truth. Yeah. Well, because you, you a, met, are, you, a metaphysical belief. Yes, because, but Michael, you... you Comprehensive yeah. worldview or... Um, uh, philosophical perspective that gives coherence to your understanding of all of reality. I think so, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. I think that's what we are. See, that's what I like. Like this guy, like he get, he gets like a gist of something in his head. Like, why are we kind of drawn over here? And they ask these guys about it and like, oh, you're talking about like a comprehensive metaphysical truth that may be like beyond certain, you know, limited things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is actually cool? Because then you, matter of fact, this is how lots of podcasts should be. It should be some guys who have some, some, some insights and some disorganized thinking, and you bring people on who can like clarify things for you. That's a good idea. That's a good yeah, approach. Yeah. Instead of just being a know-it-all like AP, who starts pointless debates in the chat by committing blasphemy against American football. And then everyone Man, goes off on a tangent. Well, uh, what is this? Black Angel made a good point. Said Candace blocked AP from her OF. That's why he hates her. Yeah, that's true. That's true. True, 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 true. I think that's why we are sitting down and talking because whether we want to admit it or not, we're trying to get to a deeper understanding. Of yeah, the I'd world say that exists. In. And by the way, that's interesting too. So he he kind of uh, he has this uh, separate point of look at this. So you've got uh, Stephen Bayer and he believes in God and. Uh, 
Michael Shermer and then me, I'm a comedian, yet we're here and we're like trying trying to figure out like ultimate reality. Like what 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 is going on? What are what is this that we are like seeking when we when we sit down for something like this? What is it we're seeking? Are we just like trying to learn some specific new thing or are we aiming at that like, you know, metaphysical over all encompassing metaphysical truth or something like that? Go ahead, say something slick, AP. I know you want to. You want, you want to insult somebody. Can't you can't I go just, five seconds? Hmm. I'm just I'm just gonna let it go for now and continue listening. All right. That that kind of truth, the search for truth as a truth. So what is that about? Yeah, that's well, because we have to function in the world and you know, we have to solve problems to survive and flourish, and that involves understanding the way the world actually is. And that's what our brains are well designed to do, and we are reasonably rational to that extent. So, but, but chimps, so, chimps don't have that, and well, they they do to a certain extent, but but far less than we do. They have a a time horizon much shorter than our. You know, we are really quite unusual as a hmm. primate. Um, but so, if you're asking, well, I don't know. So let's go back to these different kinds of truths. You, you know, know the like, funny thing is, um, uh, uh, earlier. Michelle in the chat uh, basically just pointed it out in a very short and very crude way, maybe, and said this sounds like we talk, but uh, pretty much that's basically what it boils down to. It's like um, this whole conversation, if you wanted to, uh, you know, dumb it down um, and use significantly fewer words, um, it's basically like, so why, what exactly are we after? Why are we trying yeah. to find out? the truth and what is actually truth and why are we so obsessed with it and why is it so romantic to us and <laughs> that's basically what it is and and why do i love smoking these shekels so much oh well this stuff is really good by the way uh <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah these are exactly the sort of uh questions that would come up while uh cheech and chong are Smoking yeah, yeah, Sn yeah. with Snoop Dogg. You mentioned Jesus. So here's a question. Um, do you mean, was Jesus crucified, dead for three days, resurrected, and the purpose of this was uh, to forgive our original sins and so on? As a kind of... What are you laughing? Houston What's so funny? Posted, Houston posted a Tahweed talk. Tahweed. Tahweed. Tah we no. talk <laughs> truth um the question is do you mean that it really happened or metaphorical truth or a mythical truth for or me a it's a metaphorical truth right yeah that's what i meant so for him he's talking about like the truth about jesus meant like a metaphorical truth or something like that he's pointing out we're still drawn to something like that so what what exactly is it that we're being drawn to or what is it that we find attractive in all this for truth. me yeah. for me for example uh i would say let, let's take let's take democracy the free market the constitution, or let's actually take the idea, let's take, let's take monotheism for a second. Now, well, what's the value there? Well, the value is that we have one father. So that, that mean, must mean we're all brothers and sisters. Uh, the idea that we're all of the same moral worth and our justice system is predicated upon that fact. Okay. I can't measure that. You know, I, I can't measure, you know, when, when we all kind of believe in equality oh, and we speak about it. I think you Yeah, so here, you're taking something like a belief in equality of people or statements that are along those lines, all men are created equal or something like that. How do you, that's not something, I think I think he's just sloppily getting to the point that these aren't things you discover with a microscope or telescope. You don't discover these things in a lab. You don't, how do you discover them at all? Uh, something along those lines. Measure it. Well, you could measure it because it seems to be, it seems ultimately to create more bounty than the other way yeah, of living. Yeah, so you ask right? people, would you rather live in a democracy or an autocracy? Would you rather live in North Korea or South Korea? People will tell you, they'll vote with their feet. That's an objective measure mm -hmm. of a deeper metaphorical truth or metaphysical truth of freedom and liberty, autonomy. And that's the direction our civilization's been moving, haltingly, for centuries. So I, I argue, contrary to actually most philosophers and political scientists and so on. This is not just an accident of history that we're marching in a kind of direction toward more freedom and autonomy and individual choice than not. To what end? To what end? Ultimately, you're in control of your body. You make decisions for yourself. And a political system that encourages that is better than one that doesn't. How do I... That's what I've been thinking in my entire 
uh, for for many years now. Isn't that kind of like a common thought? Isn't that isn't that isn't that quite isn't that the uh, the basic regular way of thinking? I didn't I didn't think that was very special. Yeah, he uh, Brian Collin here. How does he not call it the Brian Collin call in show and make it a call in show? How do you not, don't Brian? How do you not do that? That's obvious. The Brian call in call in show. Don't have guests in your in there with you. Have them call in. My goodness, this is like this is like basic. It's like basic social media stuff. Um, <clears throat> What did you just say? Um, no, I got distracted by his dumb sign. <laughs> I'm about to say something. No, his his, his entire his point about uh, humans going toward. Um, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Being a, you know, a freedom control charge and and things like that, uh, and he kind of made it sound like this is his position. Uh, despite popular opinion or something like that, that's what it sounded like to me. Um, and, and and I thought, oh, that's, that's why you responded. You're like, no, that's actually common. You're not going. You're not going. Yeah, yeah. A, You're not a rogue. Yeah, it, you're not that, a maverick I, here on this. Yeah, that's how I saw it though, in the entire time. And I never thought that this is like uh, something special to figure out because it's like it's quite obvious. And <clears throat> now they don't go in this direction, but this is. An interesting follow-up to that would be because you can look to recent centuries and see massive progress in going in that direction that Michael Shermer is talking about and Brian Collin is talking about. Um, <clears throat> but the way he defines it is, hey, yes, we, we do tend to go towards more freedom, more personal autonomy, and so on. Less, less, uh, less control of other people over what you do and your decisions and so on. But where... We're kind of seeing the breakdown of that entire system, right? Like if ever, if everyone is his own, if everyone is his own thing, he gets to do what he wants to do. Uh, I'm not sure that lasts for a very long time. In other words, it looks like everything starts to break down because everyone loses all their any common ground that they had, and everything starts to break down. So the follow up for me, which again they're not going into, would be okay once everything goes off the rails with that, with uh, that each man, you know. The, the ideal the ideal is for all of us to to just decide for ourselves what we want to do and so once once that breaks down because everyone goes in 10 million different directions uh, it seems like you need something else in there too it seems like you need something else in the mix that is preventing every that prevents everyone from going completely insane and so what 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 is what else do you need in your equation because I mean I think we're in a we're at a point in history where you got to figure that out because it looks like everything's going off the rails. That's a, it's a funny thing, right? Um, it, it might look like uh, right now that um, humans or you know civilization is going uh, progressively um, with time more toward uh, autonomy, more toward uh, freedom, toward establishing or finding a system where you uh, actually have access to that uh, to that autonomy, where that is the the standard. But um, you could go back to ancient civilizations like the greek civilization for example like athens and 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 look at them and uh come to the conclusion that they were significantly more um free and autonomous than many of the later civilizations that came after them and basically dominated the world for a millennium or so um and what if instead of humans going toward a direction where they eventually will have this autonomy, it is just humans trying over and over again and landing, <laughs> you know, in a, in a, in a, um, I don't know, things falling apart. And then you try it again, you start again from the beginning and, uh, try to try to go toward that, try to yearn and go toward that freedom and autonomy again. And then you fail again in the end, everything collapses and you start from the beginning again and so on. It just goes on like this forever and ever. It sounds like, uh, what Nietzsche dis uh, would describe in rather crazy terms <laughs> about, about the constant cycle, you know? Always goes back to some German hero of yours, doesn't it? <laughs> Everything's always, oh, let me tell you about yeah. order. Yes. <laughs> and the man who almost got it for us. <laughs> yeah. What's yes. wrong with you? This yes. way you don't want to be born in Germany, folks. 
final boss of Dawa. Uh, Apu Bakar Al Puff Daddy says, uh, D Wood, could you please expound on the difference between <clears throat> Judeo Christianity and Islam on science, specifically secondary causation, impact on theology? I I would have to, I don't know, I'd have to think about that. I'm, I'm not, I've never been thinking. Most of the stuff I discuss in Islam is evaluating Muhammad as a prophet or the Quran as the speech of God and responding to like uh, arguments that Muslims use. So I'm not, I've never really been thinking, I did investigate Islam a little bit in terms of what they think about the problem of evil type stuff uh, back when I was working on my dissertation. Is that, but, but generally I'm not going in a philosophical or scientific direction, but just so everyone knows, science, uh, secondary causation, that's like God creates things, but then he, but he gives them the ability to do things um, uh, sort of on their own after he creates them and so on. But yeah, I'm not, I'd, I'd, I'd have to think about that and, and look into it. I mean, I can think of, some how some Quran passages would be relevant to that stuff, but I'm not sure how uh, Muslims have been thinking about that. For some reason, I'm just, I seem to be missing the. Um, I, I don't know if there is an actual direction that this conversation is going so far that they are having. Uh, if there is an actual, um, if they're actually following a proper line, and you know, in, no, they in, get it. Yeah, he so he he goes into all this. Um, so he, he leads into monotheism and he's thinking like metaphorically, he's just basically like, this is some stuff I'm wondering here. Like, why, why are we drawn to this? What is, you know, how, how does, it's like kind of a different kind of observation, right? Like it's an observation about ourselves. You have information that you gather from the world and you come to conclusions and stuff. And you're like, but here there's, there's something about us that makes us drawn to these certain things or. Um, or there are certain like presuppositions in society that we can't defend empirically and yet they're required for us to believe in them. And so seems like he's saying, Hey, you're, you're a skeptic, you're a theist. How are you, you know, what, wh how do you account for these kinds of things? But then it goes, then they get into some of their scientific stuff. Cause mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you've got a skeptic here with a PhD in the history of science and, You've got a theist here who, uh, and it's interesting, they share a lot of methodology in common. They, they both, they both take a, a Bayesian uh, approach to things. And, uh, anyway, but I know, I, I know you got to complain. I know you got to complain about anything. Uh, what a waste of time so far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We could be watching, we could be watching Pierce Morgan talk about the Jews. <laughs> yeah, of course. We could be watching, uh, I don't know, Norman Finkelstein and Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> David, the video essay on your son equals deeply moving. Yes, yes, I agree. Varun, 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 Varun. D. Wood, happy Ramadan. Where is the pizza, though? I ate Mr. It. Morelli, Mr. Morelli, Mr. Think, Morelli. I still keep yeah. getting these challenges, David. Why don't you try Ramadan fasting? I did a quick post where I said my life is basically like Ramadan fasting because I go to sleep at like 8 a.m. And then I sleep and then I wake up and it's almost evening. So it's like my life is basically Ramadan fasting. Uh, and they're still like, no, but you don't get any water. OK, so so I don't you if I don't drink water while I'm sleeping, then I'm Ramadan fasting. Right. Um, I'm thinking about just doing it. I'm thinking about just making a video. All right, guys, here's me going to sleep. And I'm going to keep the camera on me the entire time and play it back fast feed. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not sneaking any food. Oh, my goodness. What is this? What is it? AP, turkey is a new hybrid. It's great for Thanksgiving and picnics, too. Is that a real thing? Did someone combine those animals? I know they've done it. They've combined like lions and tigers and they call it a liger and stuff like that. <clears throat> That's funny. Chirky. Chirky. No chicken of a breed without feathers on its neck. Huh. That's a thing. Is it? That's, That's weird. <laughs> That's funny. This reminds me of uh, the conflict in Turkey, by the way, uh, the country Turkey. So there has always been this this long conflict between uh, the between Turkey and the Kurdish population. And the Kurdish separatists who wanted to who want to have autonomy for themselves and establish uh, Kurdistan, which it actually did exist in history, and want to make it autonomous or independent from Turkey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they have been fighting about this for a long, long time now. So I, I, I thought, how about you just, uh, you know, I make a proposal 
to resolve this conflict once and for all. Just don't call it Turkey. Don't call it Kurdistan. Just make one country that is neither, uh, that is not about your identity nor about that identity. Or maybe it's a mix of both. Uh, instead of Turkey and Kurdistan, just call it Turdistan. And then you will have a perfect country. Problem solved. <laughs> Anyway, just a thought. Here you have it, UN. This is how to make peace. This yeah. is how you do it. Hey, but could we do the same thing with Israel and Gaza? That's the question. Well, we'll have to think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah is it right. true that in Surah 19, the dude confused Miriam, the mother of Jesus, with Miriam, the sister uh, yes. of Aaron from the Old Testament? Yeah, there, there are actually a couple yeah. of passages, and they're even like hadiths that are relevant to this. But yes. The author of the Quran <clears throat> did not know, because they have the same name in Arabic, did not know that Mary, the mother of Jesus, and uh, Miriam, the sister of Aaron and Moses, the author of the Quran thought they're the same person because they have the same name in Arabic. I made a video about this, which is uh, which I think is the best video that uh, you can find on YouTube, um, which is called One Mistake Destroys Islam. Yeah. Go ahead and go ahead and toss that in the uh, chat if you get a chance, and then someone can check it no. out later. No. All right. So Vlad Nader, go ahead and check that out. You heard the title. You could check that out on an AP's channel. He's going to go through it. I made a video about that as well, which is far superior to AP's video. Uh, Muslims have said to me, Western men don't get jealous for their wives and allow other men to dance with them because they eat pork because that's how pigs behave. You are what you eat. Don't deny the science. That's, yeah, that's Zakhar Naik. That's literally a quote from Zakhar Naik. Eat, you eat pig, you behave like pig. You eat, eat pig, pig, you <laughs> eat pig, you behave like pig. Oh, oh yeah. He also said, and there's a scientific thing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That was from that video. That's true. There's a scientific thing. We need to just yeah. go through that. We need to go through that clip. We need to go through that clip in a live stream and actually watch it. He goes like, goes like, there's, there's a scientific Thing. Like he tries I, to think about it. The scientific <laughs> thing. You eat pig, you behave like pig. I'm like, wait a minute, how did I miss that one in biology? Yeah, it turns out <laughs> that if you eat pig, then you'll start behaving like pig. And if you eat a chicken, you're going to start acting like a chicken. And if you uh, eat some lettuce, you're going to start behaving like uh, lettuce, in which case you're going to follow Zach and Mike. Lettuce. Let us do some improvisational comedy. Uh, golly G Jeepers, that was a good content warning. Yes, that was. We do need that. <clears throat> uh, opinions on Bart Ehrman, Matt Dillahunty, and Myth Vision. Quit at quit trying to get us to go on fifty thousand topics. Every single thing. Uh, Bart Ehrman, uh, disagree. We'll, like the guy, has some disagreements. Think he's got some philosophical issues. Matt okay. Dillahunty, um, Matt, Matt's, Matt's in some trouble. Matt's in some trouble. Uh, probably as far as just raw debate skill, probably the best, eight, my, my view, atheist debater that there is, but he's way too sensitive about being criticized on certain things, even though he would be happy to criticize other uh, positions and so on, does not deal well with criticism. And he's in trouble now because now people have caught on to that and they know they can just derail him. Uh, Myth Vision, we, we did a, we did a show, uh, back in the day, like a couple of years ago or something like myth, myth vision. Seems like a nice guy. Yeah. He's nice a guy. nice guy. He's, he's a, he's a friend. Yeah. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem like a jerk. He got some guys who seem like jerks and he, he seems like her. Nice no, he's, guy. he's a, he's a great, great person. A very, very nice guy. Uh, and I, I, I do chat with him occasionally and talk with him on the phone. He's a very nice guy. So he, he um, he is a friend actually. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. All right, two bits says, yeah. "Well, golly gee whiz, that's uh, <laughs> some pretty strong language there." Two bits, pretty little, little strong. We might have to have another content warning for that harsh language. Should Matt have Schneider. put this on uh, age restrict. Yeah, age. We might need to age restrict this from a uh, <laughs> golly. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Schneider said, uh, "Atheism is so senseless and odious to mankind that it never had many professors." That's true. You know, it's funny, yeah. like. Isaac Newton used the word professors as in someone who professes something. And he's saying, hey, hey, have you noticed there's not a lot of uh, people who profess atheism? But whenever I would post that quote, I'd get these atheists going, what are you talking about? I have a professor who's an atheist. <laughs> I was like, dude, he's not talking about oh, your college. He's not, atheist, we talking about? <laughs> not talking about your atheist professors at school, guys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> 
D. Wood, interesting guest pastor, Reverend Hicham Kacha with Salam Christian Fellowship. He is from Libya and he was in the Muslim Brotherhood. It was great. That's cool. I'm trying to think what what he's like. Is there a is there a is there a link to that or something like that? Anyway. Hisham Shahab. I've been seeing that uh, Jake Shields is fighting with Destiny on Twitter. Uh, <clears throat> when you Shields said fight, fight, when you said fighting, I thought you meant like MMA fight. I was like, oh, this is gonna be messed up, man. That would be very messed up. That's gonna be like that dude beating up Sneeko. <clears throat> no, uh, Jake Shields asked, like, who is who is this Destiny weirdo? Where did he come from? And then Destiny just made a, a quote tweet and said, you are an actual clown. And then um, posted a picture where he says, where he says, for, your, for years we were taught 4 million Jews were killed in Auschwitz and 6 million were killed in the Holocaust. A complete misrepresentation of the history. <laughs> and then Jake starts insulting him and says, you have a stripper name. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. When I saw, because I I had no clue who Destiny was till I went to the first uh, debate con, and Destiny was on there, and I just thought this was like some stripper or something like that. <laughs> so it wasn't just that I thought he was a woman; it's that I actually thought something like stripper. You know? <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. But just, yeah. The thing is, the guy is actually intelligent. Like, agree, agree with his views and his and his worldviews or not. He's he's very very intelligent. An awesome, phenomenal communicator. Very Jake very Shields? very quick thing. Oh yeah Who? yeah. Jake Shields. No. No no. Destiny is very intelligent. Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Smart. Very intelligent. very quick. That would not be a conversation that uh, Jake Shields wants to get into because he's gonna get he's gonna get demolished. Jake Shields just sounds like he's he had way too many punches to his head and he lost the ability to think and speak properly so that wouldn't end very well for him it's very strange that these guys are having a discussion uh capturing uh ha- here we go capturing kaffirs there's you there's a picture of you there Turkey. <laughs> it's the greatest country in anatolia how dare you disrespect it before the turks the place was filled with greeks blah which is worse islam or suvlaki <laughs> i think the answer is obvious <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I love Suvlaki, man. That's true. That's true. Turkey. That's it's Turkey. 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 Uh Solitary Emmy says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and godhead, so that they are without excuse. This is directed towards all atheists. The invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So that you guys have no excuse. Okay. Uh, Bukhari 6, Mo- Momo got a golden shower from a man. There's some re- weird, creepy stuff going in with going on with that dude. Well, that's going to be... <clears throat> uh, Bukhari 6002, the prophet took a child in his lap for technique. He chewed a date in his mouth and put it... The child urinated on him, so he asked for water and poured it over the place of the urine. Urinating the upon one, urinating upon one another. That's, That's what, what they, they do. do. That's what they do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, D. Wood, can a Christian believe in evolution? Uh, of course. Evolution. Whatever, whatever your position is, you're going to have to. You know, you're going to have to. You're going to have to see how it how you reconcile it with uh, with other with other things in Christianity, but yeah, obviously you can believe in evolution. I mean, even even if you're even a young Earth creationist would say, okay, I believe that someone can be wrong about evolution and still believe that Jesus is Lord. In other words, that it's not on the list of uh, of core beliefs. Um, I doubt either of you have seen this, but my number one expose video of Andrew Trafficker Tate is AP. You did great, but Mike Winger did one 3420. Hey, we should do that. What? Mike Winger did a video about Andrew Tate. He we have did? we yeah, we have to go through that, dude, because then I could be making fun of Mike Winger the entire time and you could be making fun of Andrew Tate the entire time. It's like win win. Mike Winger made something about Andrew Tate? <clears throat> uh-huh. 34 minutes. We can even get we can even get through that one. Yeah, we're going to have to do that, man. We got the nerdiest guy on the planet. 
talking about the top G because he's jealous. Isn't that weird though to pick now as the time? Like, like Tate's not even. I don't even pay much attention except like the when uh, Murder by Crayons or Milk Bar TV post something, then I'll I'll pay brief attention. But uh, like, to, like is anyone still paying attention to Tate? I remember we were like we were live streaming about him uh, all the time, uh-huh. and then um, I don't know. I kind of I kind of forgot about him. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So if I had to guess, like he had his heyday where he's the most searched man on Google or something like that. And now I'm guessing eh, he's pretty far down that list and not working out for him. Oh, so Mike Winger had a lot, had a uh, 10 questions with Mike Winger. And uh, the first question is <laughs> where, where do the questions come from, though? Are they from his fans? Are like every, the wingalings? Every question would be like, uh, hey, Mike, uh, our hero, uh, on episode uh, 33 of the original Star Trek series, uh, when the Klingons uh, uh, came on the Enterprise, uh, how does this relate to uh, the Bible in, in First Corinthians? Like every question would be like that from these guys. <laughs> You're just jealous because he has more subscribers than you. <laughs> Mike Winger. <laughs> I'm going to be... Uh, David David Wood is to Mike Winger what apostate Aladdin is to AP. That's his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he his his first uh, topic is Andrew Tate, and this is part of a of a stream that is one and a half hours long, and the whole Andrew Tate section is thirty four minutes long. So that's what this is. We should yeah, we, we should check that out, man. We should check that out. We got that again, nerdiest guy on the planet. Yeah. Vert taking on a sex trafficker. That's got to be that's got to be some YouTube gold right there. Yep. It's just a little late. The the, the Tate thing should have been like last year. Uh, it is uh, well, it, it is coming up again because there there is a lot of stuff going on. He was uh, recently Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate were uh, were detained a few days ago. Oh yeah, I saw that. Um, oh yeah, and, and it was over Aiden. It was over dumb Aiden blurting out. Hey, I got a message from Andrew Tate. So yeah, they're gonna sneak out of the country. Just saying this like in a live stream. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just got a message, a message from Andrew Tate, and they're going to sneak out of the country. And then people yeah. tipped off the British, the UK government, and said, hey, the, Aiden Ross just blurted out that, that Tate's planning to leave. So if you guys want to do something, you need to do it now. And they said, yeah, arrest the guy. Imagine, d- these are the guys who are who are streaming, who are popular, <clears throat> and to hang out with Andrew Tate, who thinks, who who brags about being so so tough and so great and so intelligent, and you have like uh, the dumbest person in the world is a is a is a streamer and entertainer, who on live stream reads out a message from Andrew Tate saying, yeah, he's, he's gonna he's gonna escape and he's gonna leave Romania and never come back," and of course. Of course, the authorities are like, "Uh oh, what was that?" So, so they re- they detain Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, and um, the UK issued a a a thing. What's it called? An extradition, um, extradition request order. to mm-hmm. to to Romania, and Romania said uh, Romania approved it, and said they will extradite Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate to the UK as soon as all of their trial uh, proceedings in Romania are done so they will do whatever they do to the tates in romania and then they will ship them to the uk so that the uk can also handle them and <laughs> what's what's amazing is these guys are still just jumping on people's uh shows and podcasts and uh yeah, yeah. The, the case file is completely empty and uh all the witnesses are on my side this is all just a myth. And the only <laughs> the only thing i'm even accused of is helping some girls become popular on tiktok and then stealing pennies from them that's all that's what all the uh, that's what all this is about clear and then people whoa this you're right this does sound like a, a like a matrix attack it, it is that's ridiculous that they will go after you like that and it's like my goodness people what's he doing again this guy has to actually go on trial where all of this stuff is where all the stuff that he's done and he's actually accused of and all the a- actual evidence and all the witnesses and all the texts and the countless videos where he is admitted to everything he's done and then it's going to be why did you say that what you're actually that you, what you're actually accused of is just taking TikTok pennies from from after being nice to girl? What, what, why why did you say that? That like in other words, this guy has to go on the stand, and on the stand they can they can challenge his credibility as a witness by exposing him 
for lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. And then it's, look at all this stuff you said you were doing to deceive these women. Look at all the stuff you said here that you did to deceive men and take advantage of them and take all their money. And then you, for the, for the entire time leading up to your trial, you're lying about absolutely everything that you're accused of and what the actual case is. You're lying about everything. Why should we believe you right now, Andrew Tate? And that man's going to look all kinds of stupid. Yeah. Uh, so in, in the UK, there are now uh, 10 uh, rape cases against them, uh, for which the UK wants them uh, to be sent over. The Matrix. Uh, and, the, and in Romania, they, of course, have um, uh, the rape investigations and the human trafficking investigations ongoing. And the human trafficking is just guaranteed to be to be a big trouble, which is why, by the way, Andrew Tate recently said, uh, you know, he always, he always talks about, oh, they're going to do this to me. The Matrix is doing this and this and that to me. So he, he said that uh, the Matrix is going to put him in, G in prison probably for a long time and he's going to be, they will try to silence him and try to, and he was saying just a year ago, he was saying how oh, nothing's going to happen. I will walk in there and, uh, and nothing is going to come out of this case and I will be freed. And in the end, uh, you know, they will be, they will look very, very stupid. And now he changed his message. Now he's saying they will put me away for a while, for a long time because I speak the truth. No, no, it's because you're a human trafficker. And just imagine how how dumb the fans are. That yeah. you can hey look here's here's uh here's ten women accusing him of rape or human trafficking or this or that. Oh, but where's the proof? Where's the proof? <laughs> Whereas Andrew Tate goes, oh, this was a matrix attack, and they take it as indisputable proof, like mm -hmm. like no evidence, no like everything the guy says is a lie. He doesn't have any evidence that this is all just some matrix attack or something like that. But they'll just mindlessly go along with that. Guys, that's what manipulators do. They program you to only listen to them and to uh, to reject anyone else who's refuting and destroying them. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, please impression Jordan Peterson and Alex Jones. What's your response, AP? How about no? Well, we got to. We got to do it or all the frogs are going to turn gay. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and that's a difficult matter. Yeah, that's a <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, fun fact: the name Quran sounds like the Hungarian word Quran, which in translation means early. Lols. Hey, if that's true, then any Hungarian writing from uh, if you can get something wherever that goes back to any book or something like that that used the word, they'll like be. Oh, you see, this is a reference to the Quran. It's a prophecy. <laughs> All right. Back to Brian Collin, whom AP hates and despises for some reason. Wait, we're still talking about this? I thought we were done with that. No, quit being a loser. I, I want to actually let Stephen Meyer and Michael Shermer make some interesting points. Instead of the Brian Collin talk for three hours in this interview, in his own interview show. I know it's I better because... I agreed to this because I thought we were going to talk about Michael Myers, and here we are talking. <clears throat> Michael bing, Sherman. Bing, 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 Pretty dope. He asked the people what they'd prefer. <laughs> That's funny. That was actually a Captain Kirk mask. They just spray painted it white and then they uh, made the eyeball holes bigger and to make it look creepier. Hmm. The Michael Myers mask. It's a Captain Kirk hmm. mask. And they're not being threatened by the dictator to be hauled off to Siberia if they give the wrong answer. They'll tell you that. We know. But so, so then if that's the case, it does create not just less suffering. It also, it also, um, and it doesn't just encourage the, the angels of our better nature. It also helps human beings realize their potential to do things that are astonishing. For example, with your book, the idea that there may be, we may be one day able to figure out that there is a code to the universe. And somebody had to, there had to have been a first mover to that code. That's, that's a fascinating idea. And if that's the case, then that would govern our behavior. Well, it, it's uh, interesting that the well, system... Why did, he, why did he say angels of our better nature? Isn't that, isn't that better angels of our nature? <clears throat> why do you have to nitpick everything anyone says? Hmm? <laughs> the, man, the man's making... <laughs> An important point here that, hey, 
Yes, maybe maybe the way you're coming at this, Michael, is uh, correct, and it's just this. But if it's actually this other thing, this first mover, shouldn't we shouldn't we want to know that sort of thing instead of being a bunch of uh, dumb skeptics all the time? That's but that's the and thing. You're when like, somebody... you're like uh, angels of better nature. Whoa. But it's like wait, wait, wait a minute. That was totally wrong. So I got totally stuck on that. I didn't even hear you're, the rest. First of, of all, first of all, he speaks fluent English. You speak terrible, broken mixture right, of German and Turkish. Angels better na- is. I'm pretty sure it's better angels of our nature, isn't it? You're, you thought wrong. Look it up. Okay, I'll look it up. Ha! The better angels of our nature. He said angels of our better nature. Why, on the, on the Trust Me Bro website. Nice try. Come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Before Brian was rudely interrupted by nitpicking... Michael and I both uh, affirm the political system, the libertarian system, is predicated on a philosophical premise that is not directly observable. That is that humans are uh, made in the image of God, that they have intrinsic dignity as a result of that, and therefore we say that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Now, with that as a premise... We can then measure uh, how whether or not people prefer to live in that type of a system that af- accords them that intrinsic dignity, exactly. or North Korea. Right. And I'm not going to argue with Michael about North Korea. We're entirely. But you're agreement. exactly right. Right. So there, there are both observables and unobservables as we begin to think about the big questions, and mm. the 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 God question. I think is a question of metaphysics, but it's also a question of science, and even the most staunch atheists inadvertently reveal that. They accept that as well. Uh, Richard Dawkins, for example, uh, has said that uh, the universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect. If at bottom there is no purpose, no design, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference, where blind, pitiless indifference is shorthand for undirected material processes. And I think that's a, an incredibly helpful statement that he makes. I'm on the opposite. Why? Why do you think it's well incredible? because he? What do you, Um, so I'm trying to, cause like you, APL is kind of fun. Fo- I'm trying to follow the trajectory. The trajectory was this dude, Colin says, Hey, there seems to be something. He brings up a couple issues. Hey, we seem to be drawn to being like, or something as good. That doesn't make sense just from an empirical, you know, empirical observation. It's not, it's not, it's not stuff you discover with a, microscope or something like that but we tend to be drawn to people like jesus more than you know being like elon musk in certain ways and yet how how does that make sense and then uh and then he's talking about a first mover and then hey you know when we have discussions like this even though we're on different pages of a lot of things it seems like we're we're trying to discover the truth so is there some sort of ultimate truth he's bringing up all these issues and then it gets into politics and uh, certain ideas, and then Michael Shermer responds, "Well, this is just like it's it's our personal preference. We prefer to live like this, so there's going to be a, a thrust in that direction." And then uh, Stephen Meyer steps in and, and says, "Well, yeah, but the claims that this is based on that we should be moving towards this, the claims those aren't something you go out and discover scientifically. But once you have them, if you if if we grant them." that we all have intrinsic worth and value and so on, we're created in the image of God, that we have these rights because we're created, that our, our creator has endowed us with these rights, then we can say, hey, these systems work better with that or something like that. So he's bringing back into the idea, he's saying this is more than just us preferring something over, over another scenario. The f- <clears throat> If there is one word of criticism that comes out of your mouth about some irrelevant thing. Like, but look at the tie he's wearing. Whoa, what about that? <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, what I'm thinking to myself is, I wonder if uh, if Michael Shermer and the other guy here are thinking, um, why is this guy trying so hard? And why is he... <laughs> what which what one? is he even talking about? Wait, which one? Uh, like the Col- Colin guy. Um yeah, with, 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 with me, it's kind of like, dude, you've got Michael Shermer. 
I would love to have a, I'd love to have a, I mean, I've debated the guy, but I'd love to, I mean, I, I would I had, want to if let, I had Michael I would, Shermer on and Stephen Meyer, I would be asking them questions yes, and getting yes. their perspective and not talking for 10 minutes straight. This guy is just like, it, it sounds like he's high and he's just, uh, talking about all of the things that he he's wondering about when he's high and we have so far not heard much from the two people who are actually who actually have deep thoughts that need to be taken that need to be heard and taken seriously and uh he should be i mean yeah he should be asking them questions and let them talk let them discuss with each other instead of uh, this whole lecture which is like which which sounds like a very I, i'm sorry i'm going to be very critical here but which sounds like a very very long um long-winded um pointless it's long-winded rant Long-winded, long long you German. <laughs> point of, point of you Turkish thinking. German. <laughs> <laughs> Look, why would why would somebody say long wind long winded? Like, just say it the right way. I say long winded. See, all yeah. completely messed up. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So it's it's. I don't know why is he going on these rants. It's like it's you. you it's very hard for me to follow. Yeah, it's very hard for for many people to follow. And I don't think it's actually going anywhere. The questions that he has on his mind are uh, questions that he could prepare and ask his guests here, and they could go into those very deeply, and it would be very With, interesting. In his defense, see, that's the thing. The moment you start attacking someone, my inclination is, ah, let me try and defend them. He doesn't, <laughs> to be fair, he doesn't call this an, an interview. It's a, it's, a, it's a discussion. So it seems like he has thoughts, and he wants to sit down with some experts Go ahead and share his perspective on things and then get some get some additional information and clarification from the guys he's interviewing. So just a yeah, it's not it's not a Q&A. It's a, hey, guys, here's some things I'm wrestling with. Let me go ahead and break it all down for you. And then you can give me your insights on this. So I think that's where the it's is, going. By, by the Does, time you don't have to you don't have to hate him over. for that, dude. You don't have to hate him for that. That's what I'm saying. The show will be over by the by the time he's done breaking it down. <laughs> I think these guys are about to jump into some stuff. But let's go ahead and see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what would be funny? Hey, this would be awesome. This would be like the greatest thing ever. Get like two superstar <laughs> guests. Get like William Lane Craig and Richard Dawkins finally. And do nothing but talk the entire time. <laughs> And then say we're out of time. <laughs> and you just end the show like that. That would be awesome. Just, just when they're about to answer, you're like, all right, guys, I think. Uh, well, we're yeah, out of time here. now. <laughs> that would be classic. We got to try that with someone to mess with them. That would be some big troll act right there. That would be cool. <laughs> Something to push back on. Well, well, because he frames the issue so beautifully, and what he's what he's implying is that is that metaphys Hobbesian. metaphysical beliefs, his belief in materialism as a worldview, is uh, uh, the opposite of which is theism or maybe deism. There's just different metaphysical positions, but that metaphysical views are test are testable against our observations of the world around us, every bit as much as scientific hypotheses. So oh, hey, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know what because I didn't know exactly what he meant by like. I understand the Richard Dawkins quote that uh, the world has the features of something that is just you know it's just blind, pitiless indifference at bottom. So I was like, what? How did that connect to what he was saying? Where he was saying like, actually, atheists agree with us that these this, these things have like theological implications and so on. And so he's pointing out that the hypothesis that the whatever causes our universe is completely indifferent to us is observable is observable in its features and so i think yeah that's where he's going okay all right good point good point good point and ap's like what i don't like his shirt he says the universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if materialism is true and what i do in the book is i say that that's a really interesting way of framing the issue let's now test that and see if what we would expect based on the materialistic hypothesis is actually what we've discovered as we've looked at the world around us carefully. But all men are created equal is, is not materialistic. It is metaphysical. It, well, exactly. It, it and is, so it is that we, we are starting with, we are, we, the, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because the, the fact that we are endowed with certain inalienable rights, that is a, 
that is a mythology we have all embraced. And you can measure that when you embrace that metaphysical concept that actually you could disprove mathematically, uh, it, it, it gives it gives measure better measurable results, and which is also why I'm a um, libertarian, by the way. You, you, but 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 individual three libertarians, they've all said they're libertarians. Freedom, right? Well, the way I put it, Brian, is that that that, that political uh, viewpoint is a corollary of monotheism, and what I'm interested in is the deeper question of evaluating the monotheistic metaphysical hypothesis and comparing it with its alternatives such as materialism right, which, is which is also Dawkins materialism which is every bit as much a metaphysical system uh, as as uh, as uh, theism or deism or pantheism and to see which of those metaphysical viewpoints actually comport best with the observations we make about the properties of the universe. And I think Dawkins so Dawkins beautifully frames the issue. I just think he's wrong in his conclusion. Your book is See, AP, all you do is complain. <clears throat> yes, I do. That's true. And you, fo and you, you, you love to criticize, and you just focus like every thought is like, how can I criticize this? Whereas yes. me, I'm like, hmm, let me see, let me see what's actually going on here, and what, what good insights are available here, because you are seeing the possible breakdowns of different viewpoints here. So. This claim, human beings are created in the image of God and have a certain worth and dignity, and they have rights that are given to us by our creator. The dude, Colin there, points out that's not something that you could actually just defend. Like, just if if you take the claim, all men are created equal or something like that, how in the name of common sense you defend? You defend that by observation as far as we're equal. We're not equal in height. We're not equal in intellect. We're not equal in financial resources. No one's equal in in those ways. No one's like completely equal to anyone else. Two twins in the same situation are not equal. So what is it? And the question that just arose was, is it something that we just, we kind of say, because it works. We're going to say that human beings have these rights. And we're going to say that because it, it tends to produce better. It leads to better results in society. So is it just, is it just, we're saying something because it works or does it actually work because it's connected to some sort of metaphysical reality? In other words, do we, do we believe those things and say them just because we found from experience that they actually work or are these things, are these claims actually true? And that's why they tend to work better. Understand now, AP? <clears throat> I, I do understand. I just think, uh, what a pointless discussion. Oh my goodness. This... <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Wow. Very, very and, that. And, and I think there have been major discoveries in science that are precisely what you wouldn't expect from the scientific materialist or scientific atheist point of view. There you go. Number one, the universe. This is why you didn't want to get here. The beginning. Number two, the universe has been fine tuned from the beginning to allow for the possibility of life against all odds. And thirdly, that when we look inside the inner recesses of the cell, we find digital information, nanotechnology, complex circuitry, the kinds of things that do not arise from undirected material processes, but instead based on our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning, only arise from the activity of an intelligent agent. And Dawkins himself has made, made statements that reveal his, his surprise at the, 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 the discoveries that are being made. Two summers ago, he tweeted about a new animation of the DNA replication system that had been done by an Australian group. And if uh, it's too hard to describe in, a, in an mm -hmm. audio interview, Guys, someone remember me to check out this animation. So he's saying there's an animation uh, of some uh, cool stuff that's going on in the cell that uh, surprised Richard Dawkins with how sophisticated it is, apparently. But so he anyway, he outlined three points there. That the universe has a beginning, so what caused the universe? That the universe is finely tuned for the possible origin of life, and then you actually get life. 
and it's packed with uh, some interesting features. And he's, I guess it's, he's just taking this as, here's the evidence, which which does this fit better with? And so he's saying, I, I, can, I come to a different conclusion from uh, AP's hero, Richard Dawkins. Without, but I've got animations of this type of stuff on my website. Exquisite information processing systems that are being discovered inside the cells. Not just that we've got digital code and DNA. It's incredible. It's that there's sophisticated, hierarchically organized information processing systems at work. And when Dawkins saw one of them animated, he said he was knocked sideways with wonder wow. at the the integrated complexity of these of this digital information processing system. I'm glad. I hope it and, knocks some of his arrogance and, out of his. Well, the, 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 the point is, well, that, I want to give you a that, chance, that Michael. I'm also a basic arrogance, like Michael. Okay, and the idea that we have three things that will allow us to test hypotheses. One is we've got an original hypothesis, whether it be a scientific hypothesis or metaphysical hypothesis. Those hypotheses about reality generate certain expectations about what we should see the properties of the universe or life. As you, and then we make observations to see if, if what we expect to see is what we actually see. And my contention in the book is that what we would expect on an intelligent design or rather even a theistic design hypothesis. You're making him comport- nervous when you say theistic. Keep going. Well, uh, um, <laughs> this guy gets nervous like AP when he hears theistic. Yeah. So, I get angry. Yeah, so, um, and this is actually difficult to do. There's, there's a... Um, there's a problem with information that's already in, right? Like information that's already kind of settled. And what I mean is <clears throat> theists and non-theists, we're all familiar with the evidence that's around us. So we all kind of accept it, right? We all kind of accept it like as if this fit, it's obviously has to fit well with whatever we believe because we this this information that we have is all known information. So to actually, you have to kind of do a thought experiment according to what Stephen Myers is saying. You have to say, okay, if you didn't know the features of whatever, if you didn't know the features of the world that we're in, and you just started with a hypothesis without, you have to abstract and pretend you didn't know what the universe is like, or that there is a universe. And you just start with the hypothesis, uh, blind, pitiless indifference, or whatever it is, or nothing, or whatever you want to call it, uh, versus theism. And you compared and said, okay, what would the features be like according to each one of these hypotheses? And then you bring in, even though you already know the information, pretend that you didn't know it, figure out what your expectations would be, describe what your expectations would be, describe why you would have those expectations if theism is true. And keep in mind, people have been reasoning like this for a long time. This is part of arguments against theism as well. If God is all-powerful and all-knowing and perfectly good, what would I expect? Well, probably not tons and tons and tons of human and animal suffering in the world. And so what your your challenge as a theist would then be, okay, how do you reconcile those observations with your hypothesis, which didn't seem to lead to those ex- expectations and so on? So you can apply the same sort of reasoning and just say, okay, if Whatever causes Dawkins believe in is creating the universe. Are you going to, one, are you going to expect a universe? Two, are you going to expect it to be finely tuned for life? Three, are you going to expect to get uh, these these sophisticated systems and cells and so on? Are you expecting any of that? If you have God involved, God could create a ton, God could create in a ton of different ways. So he could create all kinds of different features and all kinds of different organisms and so on. But the question is, which which hypothesis would the evidence, would those particular observations that he's talking about, which hypothesis would work better with those details? And he's saying Dawkins comes to one conclusion, and and I say theism. Understand, AP? I have to break things yeah. down for AP because he focuses on all the wrong things. Absolutely. Okay, you got all that? Now, is everyone on the same page here? Everyone's a theist. Yeah. Okay. Monotheistic, well, whatever. Um, that, that, that what we see in the universe relating to big questions about the origin of the universe, the origin of life, the origin of the physical structure of the universe, these, uh, what we've discovered about those big events in biological and cosmological origin, origins comport beautifully with theistic expectations, and they contradict the expectations of the scientific materialists. And Oh, that was a burn, but he's too nice to say, oh, you got served.
That's the reason that scientific materialism and scientific atheism is getting so weird. That's why we've got multiverses, mu- multiverses, that. alien designer hypotheses, simulation ex- uh, hypotheses, the universe from nothing idea that's been conjoined with Emergent, quantum, uh, quantum cosmology and Lawrence Krauss. This is where I'm also a skeptic, but I'm a skeptic about the magical thinking that that materialism now entails, and so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> He's saying it's materialism that entails magical thinking in order to explain all this stuff. <laughs> AP believes in magic without a magician. <laughs> I would personally I'm... find that r- ridiculous, but I would also not like to argue against this guy. This guy seems smart, doesn't he? Yeah. Like he seems, uh, I've said before, there are people and you get smarter and smarter and smarter. And then there's like a line where if you get any smarter, then you start getting weird. And the, like the smarter you get, then weirder because like all your brain power is going to one area and you don't function well in certain other areas. He seems like he's right on the line as far as like if he were just slightly smart. He, it seems like he's just getting into like the like could be weird area. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say it, but yeah. Yes. Seems pretty sharp, though. I think Michael and I have a lot of commonality in epistemology. Does that, does that speak to you, Michael? But difference in judgment about, about yeah. where the rub is. Does that sway you a little bit, Michael? Does that get you well, to kind of like, okay, ste- okay. Does, does that knock you off your, your, your no. a healthy skeptic no. here? But, but <laughs> no, that, that the, argument seems so on the frame. compelling. First of all, the you know blind, pitiless indifference. Uh, planets and stars and galaxies and space time don't care about me. They don't even know I exist. And, and, and who would think otherwise? I think what that... The pushback against that quote from Richard is that there must be a mind out there behind the stars and planets and galaxies and space time and so on that would care about us, something like that. It's kind of a. I, I don't I think, think he I used I the word a, care, though. I don't. I don't know that you said. Well, those were care. here, um, you know, created us or some yeah. such thing, right? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm just talking about the evidence <clears throat> for intelligent That's activity that say. you find in something like digital code or nanotechnology or the fine-tuning of the laws and constants of physics and the initial conditions of the universe. Yeah, let's stick with that which, idea. Which have moved many physicists but, but these, from the materialist view to the theistic right. view. Pulling the idea that there is some kind of a mind, a designer. Yeah. What do you okay, think of that, there's Michael? these different hypotheses, the multiverse, different uh, versions of string theory, uh, and so on. These are not just willy-nilly throwing them out there because we don't want to believe in God. That isn't the case at all. I just was at a conference in, in Wales y- yesterday, just returned. So the the criticism, he seemed to interpret what Stephen Meyer was saying as claiming that physicists and so on are coming up with these theories to explain things in order to avoid theism so in other words i have to i can't believe in i can't believe in theism and so i have to explain these things and i can't explain them so i have to come up with stranger and stranger theories and i think Shermer's going to point out that it's not just trying to avoid you're not just trying to avoid god there are reasons there are other reasons that you come to these conclusions and i think they're kind of both I think they're both right in the in the sense that <clears throat> you know the the atheist doesn't have to be sit there and say ah I need to come up with a a way to avoid God in this situation. It's just I'm a materialist. Those are the expon those are the kinds of explanations I'm going to look for. And I think it seems like what Stephen Meyer is pointing out is these these alternatives are becoming increasingly absurd for a reason, namely because you're you, you're avoiding theism and you, you refuse to accept it. That's the thing that, that that claim can go both ways. It can go. Um, you can you can say that uh, that you are trying to get to different conclusions because you want to reaffirm your belief in God, um, or you can also make the claim against the the materialist perspective and materialist point of view. Um, in in it might be just in both cases a complete mischaracterization of why people are motivated to get to those conclusions that they get to. And so why are you motivated to hate everyone? <laughs> because I love hate. Love the way you hate. Uh, in which um, uh, 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 Roger Penrose was there, Brian Green. They were debating string theory, the Big Bang, the origin of the universe. How do you explain it? There is not agreement that there was a beginning called the Big Bang. Uh, Roger 
Penrose was there promoting his own cyclical theory of the sure. universe, right? So there is no A beginning. It just cycles through. And yeah, so you don't believe be in well, no, 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 but my no, point that, is that's this. Not, that's not actually accurate. There oh, your boy, uh, your boy, Michael Shermer is getting burned up here. And this is what I mean. Like when it comes to like tools of skepticism, uh, Shermer is really good. When it comes to like actual knowledge of science, your boy's about to get burned up here. So just to recap, Shermer just pointed out that, wait a minute, these stuff that these things that you're taking for granted, like uh, beginning, like beginning of the universe at the Big Bang. No, even these things are still debated. And you got Penrose. He's arguing for kind of a cyclical model. And so they are still debating these things. This isn't settled. And it looks like your boy here, AP, Stephen Meyer is about to burn, your, burn, burn him up. Is empirical evidence of a beginning. What Penrose does is postulate an infinite cycle of beginnings for which he has no evidence and has to posit something called a phantom field, which other physicists have rejected on the grounds that the phantom field has attributes that no other physical field ever postulated in physics has, namely mind-like characteristics. It can reduce entropy at just the right time in just the right way to allegedly produce another cycle of, of expansion. But there's no evidence for an infinite cycle of beginnings. That's a pure theoretical postulation. Well, but there's a lot of that that's derived from the mathematics, apparently, which I don't study. Uh, You're messing with someone who does study it there, Michael Shermer. Be careful. That is not just a hand-waving move on the part of scientists because they don't want to believe in God. A lot of scientists do believe in God. It's just they're not using that science as a justification of that. So, yeah, my, Michael, my, I, I'm not saying that any of these alternative models are motivated necessarily by atheism or materialism, although some uh, scientists have been very clear that that is their motivation. I'm just saying that when they're invoked as explanations, really? they fail. Cool. The multiverse right. has the problem that it's based on two speculative cosmological models, string theory and inflationary cosmology, both of which require prior unexplained fine-tuning to make them plausible. So even if you go with a multiverse, you're back to ultimate fine-tuning. Well, we're back to this circle. We're back yeah. to... Uh, does, does any scientist out there actually think or say... Um, um, I reject the notion that there is a um, a creation or a creator, and uh, I testify that um, that I I agree only with materialism, and I am here to prove that I'm right about this. Where, where have you been, AP? That's what every dumb atheist, donkey brain scientist on the planet says. <laughs> No, is any scientist actually making the claim that they're pursuing that specifically? Like, I, I, because I, I'm not. I even even uh, you would say you would go for Richard Dawkins as the one who is like who is insisting that atheism is um, is right and that uh, that there is no such thing as a creation, there is no such thing as a god. But but I personally have never heard of him, from him directly um, such a stated goal that he. Um, wants to pursue the goal of proving that there is no God or of proving that um, of, of, of using science specifically to show that everything can be explained in a materialistic way and not in a, in a theistic way. I don't think that that is anyone's actual focus. No, and I don't think Stephen is uh, is saying that because he said he's he's not saying that this is motivated. And he pointed out there are some people who said who have said they're they're motivated by these kinds of things, but it's more like that's, that's it, it's more thing. it's more like it's more like people and because and, and my, matter of fact, Michael Shermer pointed out that lots of uh, you, lots of physicists who are theists still approach this in the same way. They're not bringing in God as an explanation for various things and so on. So they are trying to still figure out. Uh, you know, comparing and contrasting various theories and how they actually work with explaining uh, what's around us. Um, so I think it's I think it's like with people like with with the people that they're talking about here, it's more along the lines of if you're if you're a, if you're a materialist, you're just going to accept you're going to be looking for material. You're not going to be looking for God as an as an explanation of anything. You're going to be looking for materialistic explanations and. So if that's what you're left with, th those are the things that are on the table. You have to, you, you kind of have to veer towards it. And the point he just started making, the point Stephen Meyer just started making, and I think he fleshes it out more, is they f they fail. If that's what you're thinking is, hey, now I have this uh, materialistic, uh, this alternative ex uh, materialistic explanation, 
He's pointing out that none of these actually get you away from the issue because they all point to a designing intelligence. So what he was just saying there is if you if you go in the route of the multiverse, well, that's based on theories, which they also have theistic implications. So that even if you go with Penrose and what he needed for his cyclical model, he says it starts to sound like you need an intelligence because it's it can actually reduce entropy at very specific points and so on. So it sounds like he's saying, hey, if we just take the way things look as far as like the Big Bang and fine tuning in the universe and so on, that points to theism. Once you try to come up with other explanations, those additional things you're proposing seem seem to me to point to theism as well. And so he's, it's like he's saying the there is no escape. There is no escape in these all in these alternative explanations mm -hmm. of things. I, I see that he says that uh, people are generally not motivated by that, although some are. And that's the thing. That's what my mind does when I hear that. I'm like, wait a minute. Does anyone actually do that? <laughs> does anyone? Actually yeah, he's probably there's a famous quote by Richard Lewinton. And he said that the things we're saying, it's not because science is compelling us to say them. It's because we have a prior uh, allegiance to materialism. And he goes through this and he says, so we have to select only, only the, only the positions that are materialistic in nature. And he says, and he says, because we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Um, so I think he's thinking of some of the guys like that, but I think, I think you're right. And, and Michael Shermer is right. And, uh, and Stephen seems to agree that like most people aren't, it's not like you're, you're a scientist and you're coming up with your hypothesis about the origin of the universe. You're like, ah, how can I avoid God here? How can I avoid God? Ah, it's if I you're, must a, avoid God. it's if you're, if you're a materialist, you're not, you're just not thinking of that. You're thinking, how do I, how do I explain all this? And so, yeah. yeah. I'm not any closer to the truth. I'm just in a world of theorem and theory. And, and, I, I, let me let me let me simplify. Maybe maybe this is a better. Uh, way I of, cut him off though. He, yeah, I should let sorry, him finish sorry, his point. Well, yeah, uh, sorry, my, sorry. my larger point was that we don't know for sure. You know what bang the Big Bang, what was there before the Big Bang, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> what banged the Big Bang? <laughs> that, re that just reminded me of. Uh, remember Dawkins and he's called, he was saying, and so they've got a. They've got a divine knob twiddler, <laughs> twiddling all the knobs, a divine knob twiddler <laughs> who banged the big bang. I immediately looked at you because I knew you couldn't get over that. No, solution. and I, I also remember there's an old, there's an old, there's an old joke. Uh, hey, 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 what happened before the big bang? The big date. What? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Sort of a childish, <laughs> childish joke for that, that, that atheists would like. <laughs> so there's a lot of speculation. There's no theory of everything to unite general uh, relativity and quantum mechanics. That was one of the themes at this conference. You know, there's half a dozen, dozen different ideas. People have their uh, their own pet theories and so on. They're that, that's one of the interesting things is uh, I forget I forget why. Remember, Stephen Hawking said it in A Brief History of Time, which I read in jail. Um, he said that there's a problem that like, Relativity works works well. It accounts for lots of things. Quantum mechanics works well and works with a lot of things. Uh, with with by the way, with relativity, you're focusing on behavior of like large scale objects, like you know, uh, uh, you know stars and stuff like that, and how they bend bend space time. And then quantum mechanics focuses on really, really, really small small things and so on. But there's a contradiction between the two systems in that they can't both be true. They both work in their areas, and yet they can't both be right. He didn't explain why. And then I read a book called Black uh, Black Holes and Warped Space Time, and he explained it. But now I can't. He explained what the contradiction was, but now I can't remember. Now I can't remember what it was. So I have to read that again at some point. So I was in the. Well, you read. You read books. In the 1990s, I did not anymore. Now I just watch oh. YouTube videos. Good, good, good. Because Andrew Tate said it's a waste of time and only losers read books. So. That's true. That's true. And so, yeah, Shermer here is just pointing out that they're still working on that. How do we reconcile this? Because there's a contradiction involved and he's saying there's a bunch of different theories and they're working on it. Very difficult to test, if at all, or maybe they eventually will be tested. You know, that was one of the, and one of the themes of this conference was you guys promoting the standard theory are uh, going too far. 
you you don't have the kinds of co- uh, confidence you should uh, that you would need with the evidence that we have. Therefore, it's still open to debate. Mm-hmm. So the idea that there's this one all, there's one theory here, and then there's the God hypothesis. No, there's actually a dozen over here, and we don't know which is the right well, one. Well, that, that that's that's uh, not quite an accurate characterization of the way I. <laughs> I, I love it how Sherman, ah, this doesn't work because of this. And yeah, that's not quite an accurate uh, representation of the state of things. I'll argue the case because um, I, what I show is that there are multiple cosmological models. And Smart. even the ones yes. that are attempting to undermine the claim or the, the evidence for a definite beginning to matter, space, time, and energy, such as uh, quant- the quantum, quantum cosmological models or the cyclic model of Penrose or the Steinhardt model, that if they get rid of the beginning, they end, up in, they end up having subtle theistic implications for other reasons. So these many... Are those implications, are those subtle theistic implications the idea that there has to be a first mover? Is that what Typically it? what happens is that if you reject an absolute temporal beginning to the universe with one of these other models, you end up uh, creating more, difficult, more acute fine-tuning problems. Um, the quantum cosmological models have that problem. That, in quantum cosmology, which was the famous you know, the approach of Hawking and Hartle. I don't know what that is. Um, Sorry. Quantum it, cos- we'll, pro- we'll probably, uh, I mean, this discussion goes on for quite a bit. Probably Once he wraps this point up, we'll probably just go over to uh, uh, taking, uh, taking super chats and stuff like that. But there's a very, this is kind of the takeaway as far as, uh, Stephen Meyer's point is concerned. The, the sort of big takeaway here is, uh, it, if you if you look at some of the big features of the world we're in and life, that there you know there's there's a beginning to the universe, that the universe is is finely tuned, and the actual features of life, he says that the conclusion that he's drawing is those features fit a lot better with if you start with a theistic hypothesis than with a non-theistic hypothesis. And then how he expanded it here, which again is the takeaway, is he's saying, I look at all the alternatives. So what's the alternative to the beginning of the universe? What's the alternative explanation of fine-tuning? What's the alternative? He says, I look at the all the alternatives, and they actually, to me, look like they would have the, uh, uh, theistic implications as well. In other words, once you go with with a different model, all of a sudden now you need more fine tuning to get that to work, and so you're not you're not dealing with the fine tuning problem. You're making it you're making it a, a bigger problem for you if you're if you're focusing just on a materialistic explanations. He's basically saying there's no there's no escape route. Any of these other explanations that you want to go with, if you want to go with multiverse or, or cyclical model or anything else. It doesn't actually get you out of. It doesn't get you away from the theistic implications. So we'll let him finish this point up here. Let me back up slightly, and then we'll uh, we'll get AP's assessment on this and how he can possibly continue being a donkey-brained atheist after hearing this. And we'll take some questions. My Reverse assessment after with- these guys. <laughs> One of these other models, you end up uh, creating more difficult, more acute fine-tuning problems. Um, the quantum cosmological models have that problem. That in quantum cosmology, which was the famous, you know, the approach of Hawking and Hartle. I don't know what that is. Um, Sorry, quantum it, cosmology. It, 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 there was Ignorant. a there was a very popular book uh, by Stephen Hawking, The Brief History of Time. Yeah, I read it. Couldn't get. And, uh, yeah, it, yeah. No, it's <laughs> look at my face. It, 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 it's a very difficult book because it purports to be Everybody's a popularization. Everybody's talking about how great the book is, and I, I know yeah. they didn't understand it because yeah. I started. Everyone, see this before your time, AP, but uh, Stephen W. Hawking came out with A Brief History of Time in the 1990s, and it was supposed to be a popular explanation of cosmology, and no one could understand it. (laughs) No one could understand it. So it was called, I think it had some label back then, the most unread book in the world, right? Because everyone was buying it, and then everyone would give up very, very, very quickly. Uh, that makes sense. Not D. Wood. D. Wood is in a jail cell. D. Wood read it and then read it again and still didn't understand a lot of it. And I was like, I go down the wormhole yeah. here and I, I was like, hey, man. Which was interesting because, again, then I read Black Holes and Warp Space Time and it was much clearer to me. So I don't I don't know if uh, Hawking is just bad at explaining things or something. And I, I didn't study physics. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing here. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in, in Hawking's book, he purports to get rid of the beginning in his popular book by invoking something called imaginary time. And he makes a, 
a mathematical transformation in the description of the of space time of the universe right. but it's it, the, the he gets rid of the 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 implication of a beginning to time only as an intermediate step in a mathematical procedure and that intermediate steps involves imaginary numbers which have no physical meaning in that in that intermediate step. When he converts right. the transformation back to real time, the singularity reemerges. And in all his technical work with James Hartle up at Santa Barbara, um, on they never get rid of the singularity. They have to presuppose the singularity to try to explain the origin of the universe using principles of quantum mechanics. And what's really interesting about the and these are really the, the main alternatives to standard. Uh, Big Bang cosmology with a definite beginning to the universe. And what's interesting in all of these models is that they end up explaining the universe by reference to pre-existing mathematics. They have... (laughs) They end up explaining the universe in terms of pre-existing mathematics. That's interesting. Uh, I just wanted to point out the next Zachary Nike here. There's a debate. Where's the chess something and all the insults? And that just made me think, like, what if what if Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab were there? <laughs> <laughs> it would never. They would. Isn't it interesting that like Michael Shermer can sit here, like he's. I know he's disagreeing with lots of things, but he will just sit here and listen, uh-huh. and then like people uh-huh. will listen to Michael Shermer. Isn't it totally different from like the Dawa scene? It is. You know what? My biggest problem with this. Hey, whole why are you thing totally is- out of focus? People are complaining. Why are you totally out of focus? What kind of crap camera do you what? have? Do you have autofocus? I, Wave at the camera, I have, the, I have the best. Oh, there you camera. go. There you go. There you go. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, you're good. You know what? My problem with this poll thing is um, it started out um, with a rather not so <clears throat> deep discussion from or, you know, led by this this calling guy. And I was like, what, what is even the point of this? Like, this is this is not even important. And then. <laughs> And then these two guys take over. (laughs) And from the underwhelming thing that I was just listening to and the very low expectations, we suddenly jump into this and I'm suddenly completely lost. And I think, wow, I've never felt so dumb in my life. Uh (laughs) Well, yeah, keep keep in mind some of the stuff they're talking, some of the stuff he's talking about. There are not a lot of people in the world who understand what he's talking about. So it's kind of a yeah, it's kind of a situation where you'd have to take his word for it a little bit. Um, But yeah, his so he's pointing out, you know, Stephen W. Hawking and going with, you know, imaginary mathematics and stuff like that to get things to to in order to avoid certain things he's pointing out in order so he he had two different points the one the one i mentioned a couple minutes ago was that any of the alternatives that you want to go with as opposed to the main the main current views like big bang cosmology and stuff all the alternatives of that stuff that someone could think that he can use. Ah, well, I don't have to explain, you know, how the universe got here as far as in terms of big bangs, like, uh, oh, who who banged this thing into existence? Um, I've got this other theory. And he's pointing out, oh, you got that other theory. Guess what? That thing, that massively skyrockets the amount of fine tuning that's needed and stuff. So he's saying none of these work. And then here he's pointing out that uh, some of the stuff like, that that Stephen Hawking and so on would what they would use to try and avoid some of the issues. You end up with this uh, mathematics in the background, and it's it's pretty crazy what you need to get your to get this off the ground. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll let we'll let him uh, wrap this point up, and then we'll jump into some. I totally understand uh, both of those, and I understand the point that he's making. The issue is the technicalities of everything yeah. that he just talked about. Yeah, same here. Really, really, really uh, got me confused. Mm-hmm. Rather than a pre-existing material state. So you have this weird condition where you've got math, which is inherently conceptual, somehow producing matter. Mm. And Alexander Vilenkin, one of the great Russian physicists who's advanced quantum cosmology, has said, before there's matter, space, time, and energy, uh, what tablet could these physical laws have been written on? Mm. Is it mathematics is the domain of the mind? Are we really saying, therefore, in this approach, are we implying that the universe came from a mind? And so, what what I do in the in the book is show that, that it feels, philosophers call this AP has been humiliated and he's taken off running to avoid 
hearing these powerful, powerful refutations of atheism. <laughs> you remember how um, you remember how my camera fell down when we were in Israel, uh, and it, it fell when I, when when we were like at the. Oh yeah, yeah. When, when you dropped it like outside the car, right? And then yes, you were like yes, pick, yes. you were picking pieces of it up here. Yeah, and I, I think since then the whole uh, the ability to focus. I don't know why. I don't know how that works, but something uh, broken. How can someone yeah. donate to you to replace your crap camera that's broken now? It's just a lens. It's I think the lens is just messed up. So I, I have a different lens. That it was. I, I remember there were like pieces of whatever the uh, whatever goes around it were yeah. hanging all over the yeah, place. I could just I could get to get a new lens. This lens was good because it has like low light focus and stuff. Hey, a little behind the scenes. So you had that and you you uh, you drop your camera and break it and you're ready to cry. And uh, but at the same time, you've got that little recording device. It's uh, man, oh, you, that thing needs to be a bright. Well, you don't want to make a bright color because people wear it. So it has to be dark. But man, that thing gets hard to find. So AP's got this recording device that he's recording all his interviews with. And then he loses it right after we've been traveling around uh, the kibbutz and uh, uh, the site of the uh, of the uh, the Nova Festival and stuff like that. So we had no idea where that thing was. Uh, searches all searches his searches his bag, searches the car that we're in. Someone's driving us around. We're in the back seat and stuff. And, and and that thing is so important because everything is on there. I'm I'm, lo I'm all this audio is on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm panicking. I'm like, if 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 I don't find this. So much that I did over the last few days, I didn't transfer it. It's all still on there. What's the point? Everything is lost. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <continue. laughs> oh, yeah. So then, uh, then I was like, there was one spot. So you you'd scoured the car, and there was one spot where the little, uh, the little seatbelt thing is, and there's a little gap there. And I was bet, ah, something could have slid down in there. So I, I, I could get, I could get a finger in there, and then I, it was, it was in there. So that was, <laughs> that was fortunate because that would have sucked. Yeah, that would have yeah. sucked if you'd lost your audio for stuff that you recorded. Yeah, and nobody would have ever looked there. So I, I, have to, I still have no idea how you actually. That would that would still actually be there. <laughs> yes. And there's a question of like how it ends up. Like I don't know. <laughs> so it had to like fall out, then slide over there, then fall down in there. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, oh, glad, happened glad we got it there. Tried. Yeah, yeah. All True. right, Stephen, finish your point, Stephen. Don't go on another tangent developing a robust case for something, that there's a kind of decision tree. If you go with standard Big Bang based on general relativity, you got a definite beginning, and that has an implication that's theistic. You don't like that approach, you want to go quantum, cosm quantum cosmological, that has a different theistic implication. If you want to go with Penrose and Steinhardt, these guys create, uh, their, their models create more acute fine-tuning problems, which requires a prior mind and so yeah it's I mean, very whether, difficult whether it's math, to whether it's math or a big bang yeah th there had to have been again, the, ma the materialists have a problem on any point in the decision right. tree that's because we're back to the first so it's mover, not just we? yeah it's it's isn't that what it is aren't we aren't we back to isn't it wasn't it new there, there, there is a need for the first cause but there's also a problem of of specificity we live in a universe with very specific configurations of matter <laughs> i love that word <laughs> <laughs> like this guy's, this guy's making all sorts of deep philosophical and scientific and theological points. I love the word specificity. I, I, I just had always, I always had a thing with words. I still do. That's why I always like playing with words. That's why when we spent our week together, I was constantly uh, playing with different words and using them in different contexts. And you were laughing about it. Um, but I just, I just love the sound of words and the structures of words. And when I hear a word like that, specificity, it's like, wow, it's beautiful. Well, it's good. It's good because good, normally you only love words that like sound perverted to you or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like butt. <laughs> <laughs> that create all the wonders around us. You know, the, the beauties of biological systems, the beauties of our planet, the stability of the solar system. And the, the game of physics from the beginning is to try to describe or explain everything by very simple regularities. And you don't get complexity out of regularity. You if you want sp specified complexity, if you want to configure matter in a specific way, you can't just say, well, there was one simple law. Because what laws do is describe regular patterns that repeat over and over again. Sun up, sun down. Mm. All matter gravitates. I drop the thing, it falls. I drop the thing, it falls. I drop the thing, it falls. Laws like that do not provide adequate explanations for the specificity of the genetic code or the, the right. anatomy of a, of a turtle right. or or We're talking about what the heck are you nodding at michael Shermer? 
anyway. So we're talking or, about or, system, systems. Or, or the fine-tuning of the universe. There, there is an attempt in the, within the materialist framework to try to square a circle, to get something for nothing in terms of, of information or what we call specified complexity, to get specificity out of simplicity. Do you agree with and that, that's, Michael? That's a fundamental problem that has not been solved by any of these models, and they all run up against it when you examine them. All Maybe right. he just won me over by saying that beautiful word, but uh, what he's describing there sounds very sounds very compelling. So it, it ha actually has me thinking um, about it. And my no, it, is, it is to... yeah. And as a uh, as a point out, there there are like all sorts of details which we would not get because we don't understand a lot of the theory, a lot of the, th the theories that are you know that are cutting edge theories and stuff like that 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 he would be dealing with. But the the main gist there. The sort of point that he was, it's interesting. If you, So if you go back to some mathematics before existence, okay, mathematics is abstract and conceptual. It exists in a mind. If you don't have the material universe to be doing, like, how is it existing before these things? So as he says, well, that that's, would seem to point to a mind where the math, where the mathematical rules are in. Uh, Big Bang that has the implications and so on. Life that has the implications. And what he was just pointing out there, kind of at the end, what the heck is wrong with you? You're thinking Continue. about some stupid word. Continue. Ooh, specificity. And what he was pointing out here is that you think you can you can describe you can describe complexity in certain ways in terms of laws and so on. So a crystal is very a crystal is has very complex crystalline structure and so on. But that operates according to natural law. And he's pointing out information like in, in the fine tuning or in DNA, it's not just things that a crystal, if you put if you put something at a certain temperature and pressure, it goes into that position naturally. And he's pointing out that what we find in life and in the universe, it doesn't fit. That requires specificity. Specificity. If the specificity continues as it is, atheism is looking pretty dumb. All right, yeah. AP. Yeah. So Days we of Elijah, very, nice, very nice comment in the chat. I was laughing. What's about that? that? What was it? What was the comment? Uh, Days of Elijah said, "Who banged the universe?" I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Your dude already said that earlier. <laughs> Who banged yeah. the bang? What did he say? <laughs> the banger, the big bang, or whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll we'll take some uh, take some super chats now. Messianic Paste said, would you debate Osama Abdullah again? I would debate Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> Who's Osama you, Abdullah? Uh, he was, he had, his site was, an, so we had Answering Islam back in the day, and then he had Answering Christianity. And oh, that guy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he was, he had, he had the most popular Islamic apologetic site back in the day. And he was really not. Says, he was not a good debater. He was not a good debater. It, all his stuff was like insanely stupid. Matter of fact, that was the guy. <laughs> that was the guy who uh, he looked. Muhammad said there are three hundred and there are three hundred and sixty joints, and then so he 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 says look, and then I found this confirmed, and it's a screenshot from a, a hospital, and it said joints. It says joints three sixty, right? So we're like, huh, that's interesting. Let's look it up. It was actually the phone number extension, right? <laughs> so you dial the hospital, and if you want the joints department, then you dial 360. You add 360 on there. So it became a big joke. Wait a minute. This is the new proof of Islam, a phone number? And of course, so, but he would do that over and over again. He would use these really stupid, uh, stupid things that he didn't understand. Uh, so no, I mean, uh, Osama Abdullah just, I mean, I haven't heard anything from him in a long time. So I just I just know his website and the website is like it's it's so garbage. Stupid. It's really it really bad. Oh, ridiculously stupid. Nobleverse, nobleverse. In fact, uh, I can say it now because he's not married to her anymore. But uh, Osama Abdullah was uh, we were out in California and he debated me and debated uh, James White and it was it was so fun. I think back then I think it was uh, Osama Abdullah was complaining that. The Gospel of John is written by John, but then he says there's a man sent by God whose name was John, and he's like, "Oh, how can you say something like James White is trying to explain? It's two different Johns, genius." 
It's the Apostle John. He's talking about John the Baptist. He's not confirming himself as sent, as sent by God. And like Osama Abdullah couldn't understand that there are two different Johns. It's sort of like Muhammad <laughs> not understanding there are two different Marys, right? Like they yeah, don't get yeah. it. It's a, if it has the same name, it must be the same. Why is like there's seven trillion of you named Muhammad? And if it's, if it's the same person, yeah, yeah. Um, it's such a common name. That's... Yeah. But uh, so anyway, so so he did his debate with me and then he. Uh, he debated, he was debating James White and his wife came out and talked to one of the organizers and said, I don't think you should be getting my husband to defend Islam in these debates. <laughs> it's like, gosh, man, your own, your own wife, your own wife throws you under the bus. Wow. 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 That's pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty, so uh, pretty bad. can you remember that big argument Osama had with Etisham Gulam in the comments section of the answering Muslim site? No, I do not. But I do, I do remember uh, Osama Abdullah and I think Nadir Ahmed were threatening to beat each other up and stuff, but we were like, we were, we were CC'd in the discussion. So these guys are talking about beating each other up and stuff. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> but like I, we're I was, a bunch of christian apologists are in our are, are cc'd in this discussion it's funny why why were they doing that no idea that's just how these guys were they were all trying to thump their chest and show that they're the most uh they're the best and they're the they're and not armin is still around after all of his embarrassing performances still like and and i am still here and i am undefeated and they are all scared yeah. of they've me. all been Nobody running from me yeah he'll <laughs> Nadir will make a comeback. So he'll disappear for like five or six years. Then he'll make a comeback and then we'll ignore him for a while. And then finally we'll, finally we'll debate him and then he'll get crushed and then he'll disappear for a while. And anyway, yeah. but it's a similar situation with Osama Abdullah and Nadir in that like who, who pays attention to them anymore? So what's your, what's your purpose in the debates when you've got yeah. guys that no one pays any attention to anymore? Mm -hmm. Can atheists scientifically prove human rights? I would say no. I would tie that into what these guys were saying that you can you can scientifically test things in terms of if you assume certain things are true and then you see what kind of results they have. It's not like it's not like testing them in a lab, but you actually have data to go on as far as what works best. But as far as like proving the right, I don't think so. But what what are your thoughts on that? Are you not supposed to be? It's not something that is supposed to be scientifically proven. Yeah, it's a different it's, it's a different realm of reality. You could you could argue um, reasonably argue that it is a that it is a social construct for a specific purpose, and that it is therefore naturally or re reasonably not expected to be proven or objectively proven, let alone scientifically proven. Um, go Broncos! <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. They suck. Uh, Peace be upon me. Says D Wood. Tell that heathen sitting next to you. I was atheist my entire life, studied philosophy, found God, and saw Jesus in my dream recently. AP, God love you. Who is who is sitting next to you? Uh, what did he say? A heathen. So okay, but who is sitting next to you? You. I'm heathen. not sitting next to you. I'm sitting over here. I'm, I'm not, we're not in the same place. As far as what people observe on their screen, so you're contradicting their observations of us sitting next to each other. Uh, uh, I have my own reality and my own truth. So, yeah. Christians gave us science and universities. Most modern tech was invented by Christians. These have been hijacked by atheists who now deny Christians. So, what we can say is that atheism is parasitic. It's like it a is. lamprey, a lamprey clinging to the side of a mighty shark. And the lamprey looks around and says, wow, I'm, I'm going through this. I'm going through the ocean so fast. Yeah, you're clinging to a shark, sucking the delicious blood out of Christianity. No, I don't know what your uh, whole perspective on this is, David. Uh, I know you are a fanatic in terms of religion, so uh, you will probably say, oh, it's all Christianity. But the thing is, um, so when people claim that it's like atheists doing science or uh and not christians and all of that it um the the, the very well-known people isaac newton and all the others who made these big major contributions the first steps uh were people who did believe in god but back then everybody believed in god so mm -hmm. that's correct <laughs> it's like you can't um uh, 
based on yeah, the, those. Yeah, you can't, you can't, yeah, what you can't, you can't say, why didn't atheists discover that when you didn't have yeah. atheists back then? That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah that's getting at, yes. Yeah, and what I, what I had to say, matter of fact, I discussed this in my debate with uh, Michael Shermer, and I made a separate video out of it. Uh, I did point out that as far as the pioneers of science, they were saying they have certain ideas that are connected to their theism, like the universe is created by a mind. And so they compare the universe as like another book or they compare it to like a, a structure made by an architect, but they have that in mind. And their, their concept of a law giver, that, that laws, laws of the universe, scientific laws that you're, they're, they're, they're given to you by, and, and, and notice that the entire analogy is like, it's within human laws that you have the leader of a domain who makes laws and so on. They're viewing the entire universe like that. But it's interesting, we still talk like that in terms of laws of nature and so on. But so they they run with laws of nature because they believe that there's like this cosmic architect and cosmic lawgiver who's giving the laws. So that's one. They believe that the kind of universe that we're dealing with is uh, is intelligible. Like it's it can be understood because it's rational at bottom. Uh, two, they believe that we're the kinds of things that can understand it because they believe that we are created in the image of God. So something that's not created in the image of God might not be able to understand this stuff, but we are. And they believe that it was actually good. They viewed it as a kind of worship. Like if I if I go and do a bunch of scientific research and I discover the law, then I'm actually understanding something about the mind of God and I'm connecting with God in that way. And they viewed it as a kind of worship. And so they actually rolled with this and discovered quite a bit of things. And then atheists come in and say, uh, actually, you no, know, there is no God. There is no rational lawgiver. And, uh, and we're not made in the image of God. We're just lumps of cells. And we just you know, Stupid. Like, like mice. And then uh, what does it mean for something to be good? It's not worship. And, and uh, we're back to atheism Stupid. being parasitic. Sucking the lifeblood out of Christianity. Stupid. <laughs> yes. You've been hijacked. Yes. <clears throat> Hijack. Uh, AP, Christ or Caesar? That's what Captain Kirk Christ. said in Star Trek, uh, Bread and Circuses. Sun worshippers were sun worshippers. Yeah, I made a video about that a while back. I want to I I remake that because um, the clips I used were too long. And I mean, the clips of Star Trek I used were too long. And when I tried to re-upload it, the YouTube, the uh, Paramount, Paramount shut it down, so I have to actually use shorter Star Trek clips. Too. YouTube said, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to do that. Not going to do, do that. that. Five silver pesos. Bobby Boucher, uh, all lies. Bobby Boucher's mom created science and religion. You don't even know Bobby Boucher, do you? I don't know. I don't even know. I, I, I heard this. I heard the expression, and I heard this before, but I don't know what this, what the, who. Yeah, it's from the movie Waterboy, and uh, it was Adam Sandler, and he was Bobby Boucher. Okay. And uh, we it was used as slang for a while when someone like tackled the crap out of someone. They go, "Oh, they Bobby Boucher'd him." That's why Ice Cream Sword said, expression. "No, individual freedom is not the historical norm. It's a complete aberration." Greco-Roman times were not egalitarian. Christianity changed all of that. See Dominion or just look outside the West. Yeah, so th yeah, that's not the point they're making. They're not saying that's uh, individual freedom was a historical norm. They're saying, as far as what they're saying is, partly the guy was saying, hey, we, you know, what's required for us to actually believe that we have these inal inal inalienable rights and so on given to us by our creator. Uh, and then Michael Shermer was pointing out, people are just going with what, what actually they like once, once they experience it. And so they experience more freedom. This doesn't mean it's always been this way. It, it's just, hey, once you start experiencing certain things and, oh, I like it better. I like it better if I have this freedom or if, or if we treat each other as we have these rights. And he's saying people, are, he said, people vote with their feet. You're going to, you're going to consistently move to uh, a society with the features that you like better. I like duck more than turkey or chicken. Duck is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like duck. Do you not read Super Chats from before the stream went live? Uh, I don't have access to Super Chats from before the stream was live. Shame, shame, shame. I don't know what shame. you get on StreamYard, but uh, I use Ecamm, and it only starts once uh, once I go live. Shame. Kurds are cool. They are anti-Islamist. How dare you insult them? 
Yeah, good point. I ins- I I insult people when I like them. Mm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> See? D Wood, how could you allow that kind of language? Is that talking about like earlier when we were saying golly and stuff? Oh no, this is <laughs> Yes. Oh, boo. This comes from a post-it boo. <laughs> <laughs> the picture's awesome there. Uh, Zishan <laughs> says, Zishan said, how did David get Lionel Messi to go live with him? Isn't that a soccer player? It is. It Do is. you look like Lionel Messi? It called, it's called football. Uh, not, not really, but I don't know. Just look it up. Google Lionel Messi. Yeah. Uh, which country is the little country, Turdistan or Kekistan? We need to spend cash to protect a national border besides our own. Wait, what did I just say? What did you just say? You advocated Turdistan, and then there's Kekistan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kekistan is, uh, is, is different. Turdistan is the real one. Okay. Now that that's been cleared yeah. up. we've Isn't it amazing how we solve like every political problem in the world on our people lives. are stupid they should be giving it all of all to us what is the united nations when we can just offer a proper solution ap have you heard of timor Aklin youtube channels hidden in plain sight palestinian converted to judaism would love if you interviewed him i heard something like that before I I I think I'm familiar with it, and I I think I did get that res, uh, that that um, that recommendation. For some reason, I was I was about to say resurrection, I guess because I'm so compelled and so amazed by this conversation that we were just listening to. Uh, it has no no connection at all to anything that I was saying, but for some reason I was about to say it. Uh, anyway, but yeah, I did I did get that recommendation in, uh, before. I should look into that. Yeah. Uh, can shake your booty do the thug shaker? The what? I don't know what that is, but hey, I just had a funny idea. There was a song in the 90s called Rump Shaker. <laughs> just shake your rump. <laughs> it, would <be> funny. <laughs> it would be funny if uh, shake your booty has a has a song called Rump Shaker because <laughs> he's a shake. <laughs> yeah. But it's spelled like shake. Got it. No, Sh- I, shake yeah, your, shake your booty with with the the hit song "Shake Your Rump." No, I still think that I need to one day um, start a regular uh, shaky booty show, the shaky booty show, and it has to have a have it have a theme song, and I need to make a proper music video for that. Oh, hey, with a bunch of people shaking their bodies. I've mentioned I've mentioned before. <laughs> You need, yeah, you need you need to get girls in burkas for the video, but they need to be shaking their rumps in uh in shake your booties. <laughs> what's funny? <laughs> what's funny is we could probably take the lyrics from uh from the rump shaker song, completely replace them, make a parody of it, and then Sal could probably mm-hmm. like crush it in uh in in making the song. And they just gotta Sal make the good. you just gotta make the music video. Yes, yeah, Sal we was just, good. He could do that. We could have a bunch of girls in uh in burkas shaking. Uh, shaking it yeah oh hey uh apologetics conference up in uh up in ohio over the summer if you can make it there we've mentioned in the past wanting to re-record the video i made with nabil that was islamophobophobia where i'm a christian preacher who's 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 blasting away at muslims and the whole audience is like oh that's so evil that's so intolerant and then I pull off my wig and I'm actually, and then it was, it became Nabil and he go, I'm Muslim. And then he said the same exact things, but he was saying them about non-Muslims, not about Muslims. And the audience said, well, this is very interesting. There would be double <laughs> standards, but I thought it would be, uh, we kind of recorded that quickly. Like I was actually, I came up with the passages. I, I made a list of the passages that we would want to bring up. Then I'm speaking, I'm giving a presentation. Nabil's just sitting there jotting down the script. Um, so it was something that was like r- pretty off the cuff. I had the idea. I, I jotted down the verse, the verses we wanted to cover. And Nabil uh, made the script while I was speaking. And then we were done. Then we actually recorded the video. 
but it was kind of, it could have been much tighter if we'd spent some more time working into it. But anyway, the point is, it would be funny if I start off as my blonde haired Christian, uh, like Baptist preacher blasting away at Islam. And then I pull off my wig and I go, I am. And I pull it off and you shake your booty. And it's like, shake your booty is the guy. Wouldn't that be funny? That's, that is a good idea. That could yeah, be, that, would, that can be done. That would be funny. And uh, the the idea is we recorded it on a, we, yeah, we recorded that back in the day. We had a pretty crap camp. I mean, it was a good camcorder for the time, but we, you know, now we have like 4K cameras and stuff like that. We get a, mm. we get a way better video now than back, than we could back Definitely. then. So yeah, Definitely. let's re-record that. It'll be super dope. Inshallah. What are your thoughts on Julian Assange? I have none. There is a new documentary called Trust Fall with 9.1 rating in cinemas currently on UK and Australia. I've never followed. I've never followed this. Followed the situation with Julian Assange. What do you, have you? I. I I don't I don't think I I saw a few things here and there um, where I had some strong opinions, but I haven't followed him or the stuff that he does long enough to actually say anything on it. Hey. Someone put Sheikh Djibouti, Sheikh Djibouti, the place Djibouti. That would be funny yeah. if you made a video called Shake Your Booty in Djibouti. Shake Your Booty goes to Djibouti. That could be another song and do the whole do the whole music video in Djibouti. And for that, we will now arrange a trip to Africa. We've got to do it. <laughs> Gonna take a lot to drag me away from you terrible song. remember we had that big what? argument about how whether that song is good or not yeah <laughs> we did i bless the rains down in africa uh here's some jizya that i found on the tunnel floor outside the goat pen talmudic tunnels construction inc here's some jizya that i found on the tunnel floor outside the goat pen I should probably wash my hands. New tunnel to Turtis stand opening soon. Those guys are good at those guys are good at building some tunnels, man. Yes, See, because when yes. you hear it, when you hear tunnels, you think they just dig under the ground. And they got some things propped up. When they actually go in there and they have like hundreds of yards of like network tunnels and stuff out there, and they're all like and like these underground buildings and stuff like that. It's pretty. Uh, it's yeah. like gosh, put your energies into something productive, guys. You actually have yeah. skills. You have skills that could be useful in helping people and not just for destroying Jews. But destroying Jews is much more fun for them. So, Are Palestinian scientists allowed to work in Lebanon? Traveling Israel says no. Traveling Israel guy says no. So you're talking about like, so Lebanon has taken in uh, Palestinian refugees at various points. You're saying like they can't even work there if they're scientists. We'd have to check with traveling Israel. Palestinian scientists. I, I, I don't know. It depends on their. So Le Lebanon has a whole thing in place, a whole uh, ban for anyone who is, who has, who holds the, an Israeli passport or who has been to Israel. Um, it, but I'm not sure if that is, if it also applies to Palestinians. Um, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to see what the basis is for that. Uh, D Wood, do you hate Mike Winger more than Hakikachu? Well, I mean, I don't hate anyone. Uh, I love people, even my enemies like Mike Winger and Daniel Hakikachu. Um, but with Hakikachu, so he's, he's doing all sorts of messed up things like defending child marriage and stuff, but you can see why it's because of his ideology. It's like, what excuse does Mike Winger have for being so horrible and treating people so horribly all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh me point i, I guess this is in response to me pointing out earlier that ap's uh not listening to the brilliant words of stephen meyer said ap would listen if this was a hitler speech <laughs> ap would be like this oh the melodious sound of his voice the melodious sound of his voice you know what's so stupid? Right now, there is this whole thing, uh, this whole trend going around because uh, some people have been translating um, Hitler speeches into English and uh, and making you know like digitally altered 
versions of Hitler videos where they make him speak English mm. and say all those things in English. And, and some people are on social media. They're like, "Oh, look at that! Why did we? Uh, why did we always hear these uh, brief Hitler speeches and heard his angry voice? And they never told us what he's actually saying. When we listen to what he's saying, it actually makes sense." Just a bunch of Nazis on 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 Twitter saying these ridiculous <clears throat> things, and some of them arguing things like, oh, "And he never said any of those terrible things that he that." they claim he said like exterminating populations and all of that and it's just so stupid because i i remember very well that there is indeed such a speech so i looked it up yesterday and it's you can, you can find it on the website of the holocaust um of the holocaust museum of the holocaust memorial something something um and it is a speech where he directly says where hitler says um if the if Europe plunges into a war instigated by the Jews between the European people and the Jews, the outcome of it will uh, only be the annihilation of the Jews. And he's making a prophecy. That's what he says there. So th this, this is an actual, actual speech that you can find. And then you have, in the face of that, people who are still Holocaust deniers and who are like, oh, he's just being demonized for no reason. Anyway, totally unrelated, but yes. Yeah, guys, don't get, don't get AP started on all that stuff. <laughs> uh, Sheep Among Wolves would be cool for you guys to watch together. It's on YouTube, and it's the underground church in the Middle East. Hmm. That sounds based. Let me screenshot that title. Some of these places, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can't just sit there and watch someone's documentary or something like that. You'll get uh, you'll you'll get flagged. Sometimes they'll even shut down the live stream or something like that. But it might be a situation where, if I mean, it's meant to inform people, we might be able to just get permission. Hey, can we uh, get some guys together and watch your uh, watch your documentary? <clears throat> and, they'll, and they'll be like, no, <clears throat> can't. Hey, AP, it's from Brianna. Yes. Hi, AP. Are you content with the hey. idea of no God? And the meaninglessness yeah. that it entails. That's not what it says. Oh, I was paraphrasing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Pretty much, yes. That's your answer, Brianna. But um, no, I, I see where the question, I see where Brianna comes from. And uh, it does feel like, um, or, or it, it looks like it might be a very uncomfortable or very concerning very stressful very scary idea um and for me it actually was it at some point it's not anymore it's for a long time now it has been quite i have been quite fine with it that said she recommended a book to me <clears throat> um and i have been listening to that book and I still am. I still haven't finished it because I took a break from it because I was focusing on different things. But it's a very interesting book. Just want to let Brianna know. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what? Yeah. Here we have apostate mommy. Hi, guys. Knowledge. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Apostate mommy. That's me. Uh... Hi, guys. Knowledge payment here. One, are eating carbon meats, Acts 15, 20. Two, Ottoman ended up in Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> and three, do you know who Hutham ibn Abdalat? God bless you both. Ottoman ended up in IKEA. That's that's a, that's the thing I heard from. Uh, who was that? Who 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 recently made such a joke? We heard it together. <clears throat> I think it was Bill Maher, wasn't it? Was it? I think he it, it, wasn't he giving a monologue about the whole Israel Palestine thing, and then he said he said something about uh, uh, about Ottomans. And now an Ottoman is something that you put your feet on or something like that. I don't know. I think he recently said something like that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, and as far as uh, Clotham Ibn Abdullah, isn't that one of the proposed names for uh, original names for Muhammad or something like that? Uh, Joshua says, David, safety would. <clears throat> yeah, because safety is my middle name. 
Hey, nice tat. Who? What? What? David Safety Wood, an apostate pillar stash. Oh. <laughs> apostate pillar stash. When I see apostate Aladdin, apostate Allah, Aladdin, he ruined WWE for me as AA equals Arn Anderson, best stream ever on YouTube. Nice. <clears throat> Lots of people liked our stream on apostate Aladdin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people it was kind of really funny. Yeah, I it was funny, I but I didn't, I didn't even know we were being that funny. But a lot of people said, "Oh, that was so funny." It was very funny. Uh, it was very funny. I personally felt that it was very funny when we were done, but I also kind of felt bad about it afterwards. Yeah, because you're because you've been exposed <laughs> as a mean, a mean person who hates Cause, all Muslims. Because it was like uh, I don't know, five minutes into it, it was already it was already enough. But we kept beating that. Dead oh horse. yeah, why'd you have to do that? You could have you could have just <laughs> could have just said you disagree. Instead, you had to brutally keep making fun of the guy uh, for hours. <laughs> yeah, that's how shameful, it goes. Shameful, shameful, shameful. That's uh, what they do. AP, if God exists, would you like to know him? Do you harbor any bad feelings or bitterness to him? No. Um. So no to yes to first question, no to second question. Yeah. So hypothetically, if God basically if God did exist, it's similar to the question, if you're wrong, which I would agree with. If you're wrong, would you want to know it? And yeah, I would like to know if, if I wrong. was wrong, I would like to know it. <clears throat> and no, I have no bad feelings at all. Except he hates the God he doesn't believe in. Yeah. Joshua says I only have terrible feelings, not bad feelings. You yeah, know, uh no no bad feelings. Joshua says, AP, if the trajectory continues, American football is the greatest organized pro sport in history. Still an AP fan. This was a donkey brained take by AP. <laughs> this is the comment of the year, folks. <laughs> comment of the year from Joshua Wooden here. What are you laughing at? I'm dead serious. <laughs> uh, what a ridiculous thing to say. Mm. Yep. AP, anyway. if you can't answer a perfect uh, perfect comment, he just laughs like a Dabba guy and pretending. <laughs> he said, as a primate, Norman Finkelstein... He said, he said, what, what? Norman Finkelstein has some bananas in your cages. This was good. Please drop a Norman Finkelstein impression, D. Wood and AP. I haven't listened to him in 24 hours. It's yeah, all hard. I can think of is Snagglepuss again, because I don't remember what the guy actually sounds like. But uh... I just kept uh, repeating to myself because because uh, he kept saying during the debate, whenever he got angry at Destiny, he was like, Miss, Mr. Borelli, Mr. Borelli, Mr. Bernatelli, you you're acting like a mormon him. here. Why are you so and stupid? You're, you're not even stop. worthy to sit at the table with me. You, you, remi you remind me of those. Invisibility. You remind me of those Mexicans who will like make a noise on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> What's wrong with Mr. that, Mr. Borelli? Mr. Borelli, we have probably read ten thousand books, and you, you only read the Wikipedia page, Mr. Borelli. Don't talk. Don't talk. It's so embarrassing. Just shut your pie hole. Shut your pie hole. <laughs> Heavens to Murgatroyd. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you exit stage left? Uh, uh, God, the guys. Uh, you love to hate AP. It's time to learn to love, to love, and accept Jesus into your life. Wait, you love? Oh, you love to hate AP. I thought it was saying we love to hate AP. It was saying you, AP, you love to hate on everybody. It's time you learn to love, to love, and accept Jesus in your life. Amen. Alhamdulillah. I, I love to love to hate. Love the way you love to love the way you hate. Mr. Cranges says, Sup, guys, ever read The Unseen Realm? No. You read that? Mr. Ferrelli. Uh, unseen Realm. No, no. <laughs> what? Just when I think about Norman Finkelstein again, his whole attitude. It's, 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 like a, it's, it's, like a, it's like a little child. In the body of a of a grandpa sitting there 
<laughs> I mean, so <laughs> the guy is so immature. It's unbelievable, like how how he's uh, how he how he goes on a whole ego trip and rant because he's accused of getting something wrong. It's like, M Mr. Borelli, Mr. Borelli, please. I have read everything. I am more literate than you are, Mr. Borelli. Please stop. Like, what is wrong with this guy? And that's just, ter I, I mean, that's I just terrible. That's just terrible reasoning. If you, yeah. if a guy makes a point and you think he's terribly informed and doesn't know the actual evidence that you're familiar with, just say what the heck you say, what it is that refutes him. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. You don't just, ah, I've read 10,000 books, so I'm right and you're wrong. You are stupid. You're a moron. I know everything. Like, yeah, because, I mean, if you're going to pull man. rank like that, what do you do <laughs> when uh, when a Zionist comes along and says, actually, I've read 25,000 books, and you go, oh, then I've been refuted. I've been refuted because he's read more books. What's funny is Destiny uh, actually threw in some of some some things there. Like, uh, as Norman Finkelstein was bragging about how literate he is and how great he is, and Destiny is like, yeah, you're also a, you also claim to be an, uh, an Israeli scholar who can't even speak Hebrew. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's when she was saying stuff like that. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Uh, hello, AP. Dr. James Tor is notorious for tangling. Uh, he was friends with Nabil as well. Dr. James Tor is notorious for tangling with a, and debunking origin of life chemists who claim to create single cells from scratch without a creator. Abiogenesis. Look up Dr. Tor. Yeah, he was uh, your 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 hero. What's that guy's name? Professor Dave, that uh, that atheist dude who flips out on everybody. Yeah, James Tor is like. As far as I've seen, the main guy he go he flips out on. Really? Yeah, he there's, flips there's out something on. Really wrong, guy, man. <clears throat> Dave. I didn't even know about him before. I, I saw his name on YouTube here and there occasionally, uh, and I thought he just does like I don't know sciencey stuff, and then he suddenly crosses me on Twitter, and all he does is just call me names under every tweet that I make. Man, what an insane person. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. In other words, he's not just going after... He doesn't just flip out on people like theists who argue for the existence of God or based on science or something like that. Just anyone who disagrees with him, he flips out on. Yeah, it was the whole thing. Like After October 7, he started going crazy, going on Twitter and, uh, and arguing that everything Hamas does is basically justified. How dare I even suggest otherwise? I must be a bloodthirsty maniac or something like that. Like, shut up, man. Eventually, I blocked him because there was no point to it at all. He was like, whatever AP, I say. AP ran from him <laughs> because of his powerful arguments. And I even said to him, uh, hey, if, if you are so passionate about this, if you appear under every tweet that I make, how about debate me? Okay? Let's have a mm. debate. And he was like, no, I'm not going to give you my, my clout to yeah. have a debate. I'll sit you. here all day, every day, whining about you on Twitter. But no, I will not debate <laughs> you. You're, uh, you're beneath me. Yeah. yeah. Got to love this so guy. I, I, so I said to him, okay, I, I, you know, I asked you. You said no. And you're just insulting at this point. There's no use to this at all. Goodbye. Blocked. That's what mm -hmm. I did. It's, that's what they do. Uh, I support the smallest minority. It's called the individual. Anyone that seeks to undermine them is in league with Mephistopheles, I tell you. That's Mephisto, man. Mephi that's a that's Mephistopheles a kid. is based. That's uh, Faust, isn't it? Yeah, from Faust. Echoing. That's the guy that you sell your soul to. If an eternal, ever-existing source is required to begin existence, isn't intelligence and a will to act required before such a source would begin at all? If an eternal living are, are you talking? Are you talking about the source beginning? Are you talking about the source beginning, or before isn't this source is beginning the universe? To act required before <clears throat> such a source would begin at all. Yeah. Okay. I have the so same question. yeah. So this this, this, this comes up. 
This comes up with uh, William Lane Craig and so on when he's talking about the characteristics of whatever brings the universe into existence. So if it's some eternal something, if it's some eternal something that gives rise to our universe, then whatever this something is doesn't require intelligence and a will because it's deciding to create the universe and then creating it with certain features. Yeah, that would be an argument. Look at this. Supposedly, uh, a, psych uh, a, a philosophy PhD sits here and just says something, 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 and then that's supposed to be educational. And king of the whiners here. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, why can't we just talk about <laughs> talk about the word specificity and how how elegant it is? What a beautiful it is word. beautiful. It is beautiful. Spec specificity. All the just hissing hearing sounds. the word. It gives me pleasure. Uh, I think scientific debates about God are pointless. Oh, it's another person who says, here's what I like, and therefore everyone should be the same. I prefer apophatic theology like Cloud of Unknowing and St. John of the Cross. Well, since you just insulted everyone else, why should anyone care what you prefer? Hmm? I agree with Every day. Every day is based. <clears throat> Gerald Schroeder's books, Genesis and the Big Bang in the Science of God, are very good. Specificity. How do we know they're good? We just know. Why are you to question? Solitary Emmy says, I just remembered five proofs for the existence of God by a, yeah, a lot. Yeah, I have that book. A lot of similar material. I was supposed to pay a, I was supposed to pay AP to buy this book. Well, it's easy for AP. It's easy for AP to buy a book. Reading a book is a completely different problem. What's it called? Five proofs for the existence of God. For the existence of God. Who? Who is the author? Who is the author? But Edward Fesser. I see. I see. Does science point to Islamic Platonism? No. Yes. The first law of biogenesis is life can't come from the non-living. So what is the alpha life? What's the alpha life mean? Big life. The first life. Yeah, it is a... Uh, it is interesting when, so if you believe that once you actually have life, then life can uh, continue spreading and changing and so on and adapting, and therefore you can get the, uh, the complexity of life that we see around us. It's interesting what you need for that whole process to even get started. Because keep in mind, suppose you have just by luck or chance, just by luck, you get something that is that becomes a living cell in the sense of something that has a metabolism and so on and is consuming and so on. I mean, if it was just happening, if it just happened and something formed that is life, that wouldn't get that wouldn't get the process started. It has to just from the beginning have this ability to replicate itself too. So it's I mean it's crazy. It's like if you had like a, a computer and you managed to put together a computer, that's one thing. If you put together a computer that can self-arrange new computers. That's like insanely sophisticated. So you need, so you don't just need something that like has a metabolism or can consume or anything like that. You need something at the beginning that replicates copies of itself. And it's, it has that ability. And not only does it have the ability to make copies of itself, they can't be exact copies because if you had exact copies, if it, if it replicated itself perfectly, you wouldn't have any sort of diversity of, of traits for natural selection to act upon. So it, it has to make copies that aren't exact copies of itself that has variation, but it can't, it can't be too far different because if it was too far different, then it wouldn't preserve the beneficial characteristics. So at the very beginning of the entire process, you need something very, very specific. And I would say pretty, uh, pretty mind blowingly amazing. Specificity. Specificity, such a beautiful word. Here's me with the Aisha at the Aisha bar. This discussion would be more uh, entertaining. What? 
Do you, is this a good book? Five proofs of the existence of God. I don't trust. Uh, who was that? Solitary Amy. I don't trust Solitary Amy. Uh, but you said you know you have that book. Is it good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would never get it if Solitary Amy said get it. But but I'll get it. Say. And then I'll yeah. watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> This discussion would be more entertaining if Willie Nelson were at the table. He would be laughing and having a good time. That, that's a, I think that's a reference to the uh, the weed discussion earlier. I saw an interview. Oh. With, I saw an interview with Snoop Dogg, and he was saying that he loved uh, smoking weed with various people. And he said Willie Nelson is the only guy who just like completely could run circles around him. He said I was sitting there smoking with him, and I'm like, Yo, man, I need a I need a break, dog. I need a break. So Willie Nelson, uh, he said he'd never met anyone who could out who could out smoke him until he's Willie Nelson. Interesting. <laughs> AP, you must be more compassionate. What if someone with a speech impediment comes to the stream and sees you <laughs> liking the word specificity? <laughs> oh, you got to say that right. AP, you must be more compassionate. What if someone with a speech impediment comes to the stream and sees you liking the word specificity and they can't pronounce it? That might hurt their feelings and end their... <laughs> what are you loving? Uh, the character is, is awesome. AP's reaction is, exa is exactly what I'd expect from someone who giggles at the word sect. That is true. And it's not what, sect. What reaction? What it's not reaction? sect. I think talking about your... you you loving the word specificity but but that's the, those are different things those are different things specificity is simply a beautiful, a beautiful sounding word, yeah. word. yes it, it doesn't, it, and it's not there's, sect there's, it's the plural of sect that he finds yeah. hilarious and so there yeah. he's just giggling yeah. like a little kid yes because it sounds it sounds kind of dirty but specificity just sounds like just the just the the, the the auditory the the aesthetics the beauty of this of this word and how it is formed and how it rolls over your your tongue and how it comes out of your how it comes out of you once you speak it in different ways it is I'm, I'm it laughing. is such pleasure I'm laughing because I saw the next comment what is it it's uh it goes back to our discussion of the Big Bang uh, from Goat Hub. <laughs> <laughs> Here at the best site on the web, we can show you what can make a big bang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you this, whoever runs this, this account is, is, is good. <laughs> Very good. Very good at advertising. My boy, whatever religion we're in, as long as we choose the right deed, God bless D. Wood and may the moon light the path for a P. And you know what the right deed is, it is, because you can choose a religion like Islam that would tell you the completely wrong thing to do. Like it would say, hey, the right deed is banging little kids. Beatrice here says, AP, do you believe anything is infinite? What would limit that infinite into not having consciousness? We would have to have a very lengthy discussion on this. Yeah. And you would have to first. It would make have it to be to... an infinite conversation. Yeah, this conversation would take forever. It will be. It would be infinite as long as we were alive. If we were alive infinitely. AP has been stumped. The next Zucker Nike. Uh, the yes. next Zucker Nike says, Mike Winger, who, by the way, is cooler, just kidding, just warned all his wingalings about Andrew Tate. Yeah, we know. We might want to check that out because that would be the most hilarious thing ever. Biggest nerd that, ever talking about the top G. That, that, that sounds very interesting because Mike Winger seems to be uh, like one person that I think is very very interesting to listen to and why are you laughing oh, hi guys we're going to talk about andrew tate and uh, uh <laughs> I, I, I just can't stand the fact that uh people are listening to him and uh, not to me so here's my here's my video about that I, i'm gonna correct him uh, yeah i was trying to praise uh, a nice Christian I am, I am too. He's guy. like he's like the world and, champion of being a nerd. 
<laughs> AP, can, AP can't believe truth because Islam was sufficient for him. That's the oh. dumbest. That's the dumbest joke ever. <laughs> Sufi, <laughs> sufficient for him. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like it. I, I approve of it. Are you familiar with Dr. Hugh Ross? Have you considered interviewing him? Yeah, Hugh Ross is a book creator in the cosmos. That was uh, one of the first apologetics books I read. That's before I even knew like before I even knew what apologetics was, I read that in a jail cell. Given to me by Randy, the mighty Randy. David, Raskolnikov repented and accepted God in prison at the end, too. Funny that you tried to imitate the book's beginning, but ended up acting out the end, too. Fun fact, Dostoevsky, epilepsy, in which he saw visions of God. Yeah, that is. Uh, so I was talking uh, with Harris about um, reading Raskolnikov when I was uh, not mentally reading Crime and Punishment when I was not mentally well and thinking, that Raskolnikov had the right idea, but he just wasn't the right guy. And uh, so, yeah, she's pointing out that, hey, you you ended up in the same, you ended up same spot going to going to prison just like him and repenting. That is funny. You know what's bad? I, I, I feel like for years now, I, I, I want to go back and read that book again. But despite... Although I think it is, it is definitely up there among the, the 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 best, the best books ever written, best stories ever written. It's I, I can't imagine reading it now at this point in my life again because it is very very taxing and very shameful, effortful and very long to get to get to get through it. But I yeah. I so badly want to do it again. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty dope stuff. Don't know why. Always liked the Russians. Not like, not like Putin and stuff. I'm talking about the Russian writers. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I like their stuff, even though it's in translation. I just, I don't know something about their writing. They see, they it's seem just, to, they seem to understand people psychologically better than the vast majority of Western writers. Like, like uh, Tolstoy. I mean, he could be talking about. He could be talking about a teenage girl getting her first menstrual cycle and how this is messing with her mind and it would seem like completely authentic like he's talking about these girls and you know and freaking out because they're getting married and all this stuff and it's just he seems to understand the human mind well hey here you go very I, very depressing literature the russian literature yeah it is I usually do not impale furniture, but I do make an exception, an exemption when it comes to Ottomans. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Vlad there. AP means a lot that you remembered that book. Oh, yeah, yeah I do. AP's good. D. Wood, do you think the earth is 6,000 years old? No. Shake what? your booty. <laughs> Shake your booty crushed in debate by Mufti Anis Fakhr. Oh. <laughs> about to block this dude for just getting me to read that fortunately i did not fortunately i did not <laughs> fortunately zishan ali i've i've got you numbered i will be more careful in the future reading your stuff <laughs> the o <laughs> let's just move on very quickly here a couple more super chats then we have Brecht, <laughs> Brecht, Berthold Brecht says, we love reason more than you love life. Yeah, that'd be good. <clears throat> that'd be a good response to uh, the Dawa guys. We love reason more than you love death. What's wrong with you, man? You're supposed to move on. Start to acting like a four-year-old. Can't do. Gosh, I should just get, I, my, I should just get my five-year-old to do shows with me. It's, it's, not even, it's not even the joke itself, but rather the moment of realization and your oh that just killed me <laughs> well it's funny because at first i'm thinking oh did someone make a response to one of a joking response to one of ap's uh shake your booty videos <clears throat> oh boy yeah um i'm here again so i see that ap removed his cross so i guess he's gay now huh i warned you man but no honestly love you guys so much what are you talking about he still got his cross what are you saying here you go 
Powerful. Powerful. What? Powerful. Powerful. You see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Blue Moon says, why does it matter if some people are atheists as long as they do not harm anyone? Many say we need God, religion for structure, especially young people. Isn't it a bit dangerous? People may choose the wrong God. Um, well, there are, mul there are multiple issues involved here, Blue Moon. Uh, so one is, well, beliefs can be relevant to how people live. So uh, there's that. And two, there's a matter of some people just want to know what's true, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah, so it's true. I want to say, hey, I, if God exists, then I would want to know that God exists. Or if God didn't exist, then I would want to know that. If Islam were true, I'd, I'd want to know that. So there is just this idea of uh, something is true. We'd want to know it. Hello, outsiders. Aisha, uh, what language is it? What is this? What language? Is this French? Yes. Aisha, je avec ce pupi. What? <laughs> I'm guessing it's something I don't want to read. I don't know. Uh, and finally, what if someone who doesn't like science watch it? Oh, here we go. It's another warning. It's cool. We've had like 15 <laughs> warnings during this show. What if someone, what if someone who doesn't like science watches this stream? Dark side of Christian YouTube exposed career ended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, AP. Yes. We're, we're planning on going live again tomorrow on your channel, right? Yes. Give everyone an idea of what to expect over there. Yes. What are we talking about tomorrow on your channel, AP? Yes. Oh, uh, Aisha joue avec sa poupée means Aisha played with her doll. Hmm. That is true. That is true. Aisha joue avec <clears throat> sa poupée means Aisha played with her doll. So it's what funny. are we talking about? Uh, Tomorrow we are, uh, Mr. Morelli, tomorrow we are going to talk. <laughs> now, tomorrow I want to look at um, at Pierce Morgan's conversation with, um, with Mehdi Hassan, uh, considering that Mehdi Hassan is a, is, a, is, is a terrible, terrible guy and something like that we might want to have a look at that that's what i'm planning for now there's also something else about mehdi hassan that might be more interesting that i want to look into but um yeah yeah so tomorrow are... will be mehdi hassan day yes on AP tomorrow all right ladies and gentlemen don't miss it and miss we it. will catch you all then we will catch you tomorrow mr Borelli. Also, uh, for everyone who uh, was interested in the discussion and the video we're watching, um, there's a link to the full discussion in the description box. It's uh, about an hour and whatever it was, 45 minutes or so. Uh, and there's a link to the channels of Michael Shermer and Stephen Meyer there if you want to check out more from them. In the meantime, we'll catch you all tomorrow. And also, you can watch some of the Michael Myers movies on that will help Amazon you. Mm -hmm. and other places. Yeah, watching Michael Myers go around just brutally murdering people will give you all a good understanding of the moral implications of atheism. Yes. I'll leave you all with that.